Okay, on that note, Christmassy note, we should begin. I'll take my have one of my headphones out. Shouldn't really have two in while I'm talking, or else I can't hear properly. How's everyone doing this evening? So I've got a nice bottle of I think it's a Bordeaux actually, I'm not sure. Uh oh, it says Grand Wine of Bordeaux, so yeah, maybe it is. Um which is not something I drink very often, but um, as I said before, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of the kind of complexity of uh, French reds, to be honest. But um, occasionally I do like to give them a try, and I really enjoyed the Chateau Neuf. So I spotted this; it was on it was on offer, so I thought I'd get this. This is uh, I haven't actually added it to the the wine list either yet. So um, where's my beer? So let me quickly add that to the wine list. Uh, and then I will quickly say hello to everybody, get that air in, open my cider, and we shall begin. Hope you're all doing well. It's Saturday evening. God, it's cold again. It was warm in here, like, literally five minutes ago. And I just opened the door to cool it down, and now it's freezing. Typical. Can't win. Can't win. All right, let me just add this wine in before someone presses it and gets the wrong thing. So we are drinking tonight. Uh, Montagne Soup Emilion. Uh, I believe it's a Bordeaux. I'm going to put Bordeaux down because... And I will say thank you for all the follows and stuff in a second. Uh, 2018 Bordeaux, which is obviously France. There we go. Bourgogne red wine, drastically more different than Bordeaux red wine. Plus, you prefer it more, more fruity. Yeah, I do prefer my reds a bit fruitier. The this is why I tend to drink New World Reds because they tend to be less complex, less um, uh, less kind of deep than than the, uh, the the Old World Reds. Like Italian and French Reds, uh, I I do generally struggle to to drink. Um, but the actually I do like a Spanish Rioja though. So, All right, let's go through all the cheers and hellos and everything while this airs. Breathes a bit. There we go. Let's get my wine out. Okay, cool. Uh, let me open a file so you've got something to look at. Make it a bit bigger. There you go. Right, who've we got here then? Uh, let's find the window. Oh my god, is there a hype train again? Yeah, yes. Why are the hype trains getting so regular? Uh, thanks for all the hype stuff, uh, guys. I I will uh, I'll I'll come to that all in time. Let's let's go through the the greetings first. Uh, so who we got here? Then we got Steps, who is here uh, just before the stream started. Uh, Mister G, who is also here. Uh, hi guys, thank you for being early. Uh, Fitrend, Andy Magic Knight, Amok sixty four, True Tonys. Oh man, thanks for all these these sub stuffs. I, I will I will promise you I'll get to those in a minute. <laughs> uh Pro7, um uh Vostiar, Mad Z28, uh Spec Homster, uh Microman, um uh Richmond Mike as well. Thank you for the sub Mike. I can see that in the chat there, so Thank you for that straight away. Um, uh, thank you for the resub as well, Amok. I can see that in the chat, and I'm going to go through all of these in a minute in in, in my uh, Streamlabs um, panel and then just double check them as well. Uh, Fitrend, I think I've already said hello, but welcome again anyway. Um, SP175, welcome. Click Tech Kev, Acmefin, Mad Beagle, Hayes. Kelso, uh, Gareth, eleven thirty. Welcome. Um, 
Uh, thank you for the sub as well, Warlock, and welcome, uh, Twitch Igor. Hi. Uh, thank you for the cheers, uh, for the cheer, Microman, for, for the bits. Oh my god, this is so hard to keep up with. Slow down, guys. Slow down. Uh, Greg Twy, welcome. Oh, and Amok, thank you for the gift subs as well. Well, Amok, uh, gift subs to uh, Mad Zed, Coda Mick, Debs00, zero, zero, Pixel, Pixel Pish, or Pish, uh, uh, Team Rand, Team Randy B. Um, thank you very much for the gift subs. Generous as ever, Amok. Um, just for that, I think I will try and hunt down some of that red wine uh, and, and drink it on stream. Just because you're so generous, I am going to drink. <laughs> that seems fair. Um, I think I've got everybody now. Uh, but whenever I say that, there's always somebody else. Oh, and thank you for the bits as well. I'm like, super generous. And there you go. There, there's the there's the bottle of wine paid for. Uh, well, I assume it's, but I, I don't know how much the wine is yet, or where to even get it from. Um, oh, I've got, I've got some information about that in a minute. <laughs> Steps, uh, mythical duck. Thank you uh, for for joining. Uh, I think that's everybody. Okay, cool. Right, let me just go through my Streamlabs panel, make sure I haven't missed anything on here. So. Uh, Resubs from Richmond Mike, Amok, and Warlock. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the bits, uh, Microman. Um, thank you for the resub as well, Andy. Uh, and thank you for the host. Thank you for the bits, Prowse 7. Thank you for the crazy um, gift subs as well, Amok. Um, thank you for. My phone's going mental now as well. Uh, thank you for the resub, Mad Beagle. Thank you for the. the Bits Amok and thank you for the bits Hayes. Wow, cool. And he's still going. Oh damn it. Is the hype train still on? Where's the hype train? Oh god, yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, thanks for the bit steps. Okay, cool. Oh god, I need a drink after that. So just to let you guys know, next week I'm gonna be doing the Pi 400 giveaway. I'm going to be giving away uh, three Pi 400 starter kits. So you get you get a Pi 400. Um, you get, uh, I believe it comes with an SD card. I'm not sure if the OS is already installed on the SD card because uh, I didn't get the starter kit. Um, but it may it may well be. Um, but it's not hard to install on it anyway if it, if it doesn't come with it. Um, you also get a, a mouse, uh, power leads, uh, and such. Um, what am I missing? What am I missing? Hang on. Uh, hey, Jessica Hot Gems, welcome. Uh, TTS disabled. No, TTS shouldn't be disabled. Uh, uh, what am I? What am I missing here? Tell me what am I missing? Uh, uh, what's the channel points price for entering the pie competition? Oh, the card comes and the o OS is installed. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll answer the questions in a second. Uh, you also get a little booklet um, mm -hmm. that, that gives you a guide to kind of using it as well. And I think you get all the leads like that you need for, for plugging it in the micro HDMI, uh, the power connector and stuff. So, so basically it comes out of the box, ready, ready to go. Um, so it's as close as you will get to kind of the old, old school, uh, retro systems where you got, you got a complete computer in a box and all you had to do is plug it into your TV off you went and it's the same thing so but obviously with a with a pie so so i'll be giving away three of those um on the next stream um i think the way i'm going to do it is um i'm going to, to to encourage people to interact with the stream um i'm going to do uh two types of giveaway there's going to be um there's going to be two giveaways which are done with quiz questions. 
Um, there's going to be very, very simple quiz questions. I'm just going to ask something stupid, like you see on daytime TV. I'm going to ask a question. There's going to be a multiple choice answer. Um, anybody can answer in chat. If you answer correctly, you get entered into the draw, in, and I will pick a, I will pick at random one somebody who's answered correctly. The reason I'm doing it that way uh, for for two of the Pi four hundreds um, is because that makes sure that um, firstly people are active in the chat. Um, everybody will be given a chance to answer. Um, there will be no. It's it's not the first one to answer. All you all you will be given is multiple choice like. Um, uh, how many kilobytes of RAM does the C64 have? And the answers will be like A, one kilobyte, B, 64 kilobytes, uh, C, 512 kilobytes. And you'll be given a minute to answer. Everybody types their answer into chat. Everybody who's correct will get uh, will get drawn at random. So, um, and that's how, that's how it will work. And that way we make sure that we've, um, we give newcomers a chance uh, but they will have to kind of be relatively uh relatively active in chat so um <laughs> no 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 they they will be they'll be super 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 easy questions anybody who follows anything retro will be able to answer these things they will be commodore related uh, but they'll be super super simple they'll be like daytime tv questions where you you have to be kind of stupid to get the the answers wrong. So, um, so that's how I'm going to do two of the giveaways. So that's going to ensure that it's not going to ensure, but it's going to limit the the um uh, the ability for people to do uh, multiple entries and things like that. Uh, it's not going to stop it, obviously, but um there will be um there will be some kind of What's the name of Shallows Fifteen? Yeah, um, there there will be some checks I can do afterwards. So I've I've had a look up up what I can do about checking certain things. So, um, please, if you are going to enter, don't enter with accounts made. I I, I I'm going to actually make sure that people's have has accounts made at least a month uh, ago. You know, I want your accounts to be a month old. So no no use making a ton of accounts now because if they i will be questioning it if your account is less than a month old um and finally the 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 final giveaway will be with channel points uh it will be similar to a normal giveaway it will be a bit less i think it will probably be a thousand channel points um just to give more people a chance to enter uh but at the same time everybody who and there'll just be a single ticket or a single ticket a thousand channel points to enter However, um, to give um, long-time subscribers uh, a chance, then if you're subbed, you'll just get an extra ticket thrown in, I think. Um, I, I think that's how it's going to be. I'll announce, I'll announce better on the night, but um, it, will, it will probably be uh, something along those lines. So, um, But there'll, there'll, be, uh, there'll be two chances to win a Pi uh, 400 with just answering, answering a question. Uh, and answering the question correctly will put you into a draw. It won't. It's not the first person to answer, so don't worry about lag or anything like that. Um, and finally, I will be doing this all of this while wearing a Santa T-shirt and a Santa hat as well. So I'll be I'll be known as Shell Santa Claus um, on the night, and you will have to refer to me as such. And I will deem if you've been a good boy. or girl for that matter where's the face palm emoticon will i dance no i will not dance shalanta doesn't dance uh the the face palm emoticon is not actually in twitch is it it's just in um it's just in uh bleh. It's it's just in my uh, Discord, so it'd be good if we could get that in. Okay, Sid's are quiet. All right, let me just knock them up a little bit. There you go. Gone up ever so slightly. Okay, cool. So with that out of the way, uh, I want to move on to one more thing before we start, uh, which is the 
uh, competition we launched this week. Um, so this is it, the Cassette 50 competition. Um, it'd be really good if if people could enter this. I just want to put some, some stuff to kind of rest a little bit with this because there has been a little bit of confusion over the requirements. Um, I did make a post on Twitter today about it, but I, I'll just I'll just explain a little bit as well. So the idea of the competition is is to create games in the kind of vein of the cassette fifty games, which is a, 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 a it was basically a shovelware um, thing where um, the 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 organisers just got together. Yeah, there you go. An example of shovelware. Um, they got together fifty uh, games with very kind of low quality, low low kind of effort games. Um, and put them all on a cassette. So obviously, there's a few ways we could have done this with the rules. Uh, one of the ways we could, would be would have been to say make them 4K games, and that certainly would have produced the same thing. Um, however, we didn't want it to be exactly like the craptastic competition. So I came up with the kind of probably over-engineered solution of um, uh, keeping everything in memory below uh, uh, 1,000 hex address. Um, the reason for this is because it, it does a couple of things. Firstly, um, it, it creates similar kind of limitations, um, but it has scared. Yeah, exactly. It has scared everyone off. So I just want to put some some things to rest here. Firstly, you can think of it for those who really, really worry about the limitations. Just think about it as a, a two kilobyte challenge. Um, you can write something that fits from 0801 up to uh, 1,000, and it will be two kilobytes, and a two kilobyte game perfectly fits the theme of this. Absolutely. There's nothing stopping you doing that. And that you can do that with everything we've been doing here um, in Kick Assembly. You know, basic up start to entry, do your entry here. Oops. Write two kilobytes of code down here, and you're good to go. Um, the memory limitations just mean you you're probably going to have to leave your screen at 0400. Um, it means you can't store anything up in the above that that that, that level. Um, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, it also means basic can work. Um, most basic ten liners. Um, so a, a basic program is uh, per line eighty characters max. So and this is a very rough estimate, but if you take 80 bytes for, for each line, uh, times that by 10, that's 800 bytes. Um, that's uh, two and a half times less than the space you've got in that two kilobytes. So you could, in theory, write around about a 20 line, 25 line uh, basic program, and, and it still fit. Um, I have included uh, a piece of code here that you need to put poke 56 comma 16 this just limits the basic memory to that two kilobytes um so you can't use anything above it so that will be fine anything else you do beyond that is just entirely up to you if you want to use memory that's below 0800 so if you want to use uh screen memory you want to use uh, uh kernel vector memory uh, tape buffer memory stack memory entirely up to you and you can do that um, and if you do that, you might be able to push up towards 4K. You won't get exactly 4K, but you'll be getting towards 4K. And and that's that's there to give those who want a bit more of a challenge um, a way to kind of to squeeze a little bit more out. I will post uh, some details in the coming week about how to squeeze a bit more out, some tips and tips and tricks, tips and tricks. Um, basically just how to use that memory below that area uh, and some some hints on uh, how you might might use a uh, memory below uh, below basic or use memory in the screen area uh, to do various things um and how to save kind of bytes when you're doing things as well um yeah so anyway i just wanted to to mention that i've actually joined it myself as well i'm going to i'm going to put a single entry in i've got uh, i've got an undo uh, I've got one idea that I want to try and carry out. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to be any fun, but I just want to give it a try anyway. Um, I am a judge, so I won't be able to vote on my own my own uh, my own game. Uh, likewise, I'll, I'll be giving 
oh, I think I get, I think I have to give less points to everything as well. Something like that. I can't remember what it is, but, um, uh, oh, and the competition runs to the 31st of March, um, next year. So you've, you've got three and a half months or so to do it. So plenty of time, plenty of time. Every game that, that's entered will be on the tape. Um, the tape will be released by, uh, Phoenix, well, um, which is a, a, a kind of, uh, a, a, a bitmap soft kind of sister company, sister kind of label. Uh, and that will be released um, shortly after the competition closes with with proceeds going to special effect charity as well. So there you go. That's why I think um, everybody should give it a go and, and enter the competition. Um, it can be as simple and as crap as you want. It really does not matter. Um, it really doesn't matter. the 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 whole idea is that they're they're gonna be not great. So, um, uh, also, I think the winner gets uh, a, a free copy of a book from Gray Fox Books as well. So, and the top ten uh, games in the list will also receive a free copy of the tape as well. Okay, that's enough plugging of that. I shall, as I say, I shall update um, on. Uh, probably through all my usual channels, uh, probably through the community page on itch um, and through Twitter and through my discord and through the, um, the channel, um, the RVG channel as well. Um, some, like I say, some tips and tricks on how to do that. I think Mad Beagle has already posted a few uh, basic tips as well. Um, so, so they're, they're worth looking at. Um, but please don't don't be afraid to to enter it at all. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, an assembly program. And, and to be honest with you, you'll probably get more out of a pure basic program anyway, um, uh, because you you can you can call functions in the basic area. That's absolutely fine. You just can't write anything to it yourself. That's absolutely fine. You can call basic functions, and you can call um, you can call kernel functions as much as you want. Um, yes, you can call them from um, from uh, assembly as well. Yeah, and that's good. That's one of the tips I would suggest as well. So, for instance, if you want to clear the screen, uh, instead of setting up a loop to go through the screen and clear it, call you know which is going to be what twenty bytes or something to do that um, minimum. Uh, it, yeah, sixteen to twenty bytes or something. Just call the clear screen routine. There's a basic routine which will do it for you. Just call that and it will do it for you much easier um and also a little tip is if you um at least i think it does i need to check this but if you set the um if you set the ink color before you clear the screen i think it clears the screen to that color as well i'd have to check that though so don't don't quote me on that um uh, c64 didn't have cls no but it did have a, a special character you could print that which did the same thing yeah the heart thing yeah that's right. Okay, let me start the quiz up, guys, um, and then we shall get cracking on. So what I wanted to do tonight was um, take a look at the intro a little bit um, and maybe make some levels nice and relaxing, nothing nothing too too complicated. Uh, thank you for the follow, Yo-Yo again. Sorry, let me – have I not got my – oh, okay, hang on. Right, there we go. Um, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so so we're going to do some very basic um, intro stuff today. I don't want to do anything too complicated. Um, I want to I'm going to relax a little bit today. Uh, uh, let's give you all ten k as well. Yeah, steps. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh my god, he's like an addict, isn't he? It's so funny. <laughs> oh. Oh. There you go. That was weird. Syntax error in line 10. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got. So I, I seem to remember we've done a paging system. 
Um, but I don't think we've done very much more beyond that. So let's take a look where we're at. Just make sure everything's set up right. Make sure that the sound is off because I don't want the sound playing. Okay, that's good. Uh, okay, cool. So we had the high scores uh, and we have the, um, the, the kind of credits. I think we were talking about a way of organizing these things uh, a little bit. So there should be a couple of pages of how to play the game. Credit should be at the end, high score before the credits. Okay, so did Steps get his points? Uh, yeah. Everyone's got their points. Yeah, he just hasn't lost them yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give give him five minutes and it'll, yeah, two minutes exactly. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll add two more pages into here. Uh, we'll we'll organize these pages a little bit. So I'm going to make this. Uh, page four, I'm going to make this page three, and then we're going to have two other pages, pages one and two, which are going to be um, some introduction to, to playing the game. Um, so let's have a look at that. See how much memory. I think we. I think I said on the last stream I wasn't too bothered if the memory overflowed a little bit because I could move stuff around. We are kind of running a little low on memory here. Um, but I can move some of this stuff uh, down somewhere else. Intro text can be moved up to the end of uh, end of the level space. Okay, I'm not sure how much of the sprite space is taken up as well, so we might have a look at that in a minute because um, maybe we can squeeze some stuff into sprite space. Uh, we've also got two char sets, uh, which seems awfully inefficient, but it's probably okay, I think, for now. All right. Um, what I might do as well um, is if I get a couple, if I get some ideas together for the competition, I might do some of them on stream. I might do some like one one stream challenge um where like on a i don't know in a, in a three or four hour uh window i do do a game for the competition or something i don't know i don't know i don't know how it's gonna work uh, to be honest i've just got one idea i want to try out um, i don't know if it's going to fit into that amount of space um at all i don't know why the sids are quiet there you go. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Okay, cool. Uh, I hope the stream quality and the um, the frame rate is is okay because I did mess around a little bit um, after after my. Uh, cyberpunk streams get warm again also this beard is irritating me but i'm determined to not shave this beard until after next week so when i when i do the the uh shalanta claws stream i'll have a santa beard for you all things i do for you guys uh where is the intro title card is it title title screen there we go intro title screen oh why has it gone on to big me what's that about big me
I don't know how I did that. It's weird. Beard zoom in. Yeah, close up. <laughs> I don't know how I managed that. That was weird. Uh, oh, what's red and bad for your teeth? A brick. <laughs> That's that's pretty good. I like that one. Oh my god, the twenty minute Tetris tune. <laughs> Do I use the three D printers in the back for anything in particular? Um, various things. So, um, I've been making stands for my um, uh, for my Famicom games. Uh which is a combination of some resin printed parts and some FDM printed parts. Um, but yeah, I, I, I need to, uh, I need to come up with some more stuff to print. Uh, MacMail 1212. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Okay. So here is our page stuff. Uh, I believe, let me just not let down ever so slightly. That's just a little bit too big. There we go. Yeah, okay, so we've got the credits. Max page is two. So I'm going to change max page to four. We're going to have four pages. Um, I don't know where the page list is. There should be a page list somewhere. Here we go. Like so. Hey, Tin Spin. How do I like Cyberpunk? I really, really enjoy it. I've been playing it today as well. I was supposed to be doing that at my uh, Mega 65 uh, Sprite multiplexer. Uh, today but i ended up doing that instead uh, i've got some um i've got some uh, some funky ideas for how to do that some like cyberpunk some hate it with a passion it's definitely got its issues um but i can look past them because i, I find the uh the, the amount of detail they put in the world is incredible um and it's actually quite it's just quite fun to play as well so um it's it's a new rpg style game it's it's interesting enough um i i really like it so i will be continuing to play it for a while anyway that's for sure i may play a little bit after stream as well i'm not sure i'm not sure probably not actually okay let's change these a little bit so let's make this Okay, so this is credits, which I'm going to put on the last page. So I'm going to make that page three. Uh, and high score, I'm going to make page two. Uh, and then we need page zero, page one. Uh, okay. Um, so what we should see if I run this now is is a blank page for twice the length of like two blank pages, so you won't see any change. Then the high scores, then the credits. This tune is ridiculously long, yeah. Um better than getting your brains knocked out with a slice of lemon wrapped around a gold brick, yes. Oh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's, do you know what? Oh, oh, that's a bit weird. Okay. Oh, why is he actually he's drawing something random? That's made me want to make another character in in the. Uh... So when I when I've played through the game, I'm going to make another another character in Cyberpunk, and I'm going to I'm going to play it like a character out of um, Hitchhiker's completely from beginning to end. I don't know why that's. Hmm. 
Uh, thank you for the follow syntax. Uh, welcome to the stream, and thank you for the bits, Doxter, as well. Incoming bits, booze, win, love. Yeah, I don't know. TTS seems to have stopped. Yeah, or maybe it's the alert volume. I'm just slowly inching all the volumes up, aren't I? Oh, do you know what? I t I did turn the uh, volumes down a little bit. So, accidental Ford Prefect. Um. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it's going to be one of those two, possibly, or maybe Zaphod. Um, but I'd really like the idea of making an Arthur Dent and finding some kind of dressing gown and just using that constantly, just constantly having a dressing gown on. I think that would be really funny. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with multiplayer. That that will be interesting. So one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. Okay, I'm not sure why that worked the way it did. Let me try again. Yeah, Marvin. Yeah. Yeah, Hitch Hitchhikers is by far my favorite book of all time. As I've mentioned many times on the stream, I, I read that book probably once a year, uh, once every two years or so. Um, I haven't read it for about, about a year, actually, so I'd probably do another read of it soon. Um, I recently started including uh, the sixth book in the trilogy um, to that, even though it's not uh, Douglas Adams' book. It is written in his style, so... Um, and I think I think Owen Colford did a pretty good good job of it, to be honest. Um, so I will be. In fact, I'm probably going to read that again soon, just to kind of get get an idea in my head of um, of what I want to make for my next uh, character in in Cyberpunk. But uh, I I like, I like the idea if there's multiplayer that I can I can then take a, a guy called Arthur Dent who just wears a dressing gown all the time into multiplayer. I think that'd be really cool. Okay, um, so that's working. We've got we've got two extra pages in here now. So now we need to work out what I want on those pages. So taking a look at the intro stuff here. So this is about how much room I've got for text. It's not an awful lot. So let's go ahead and, um, oh, do I need that byte there? I don't think I need that byte there. Uh, but let's let's make another thing here. Let's call it, uh, let's call it page. Well, let's call it page zero because they're numbered slightly differently. Uh, like so and we might actually be able to reuse um some of the code ah uh, no because the colors are going to be different so uh also the finnish radios i wish i could understand finnish because i would love to read I would love to to hear though. I absolutely love the British um, radio series. I think it's absolutely incredible. Um, I, I think it's the best. Um, <laughs> I think it's the best version of Hitchhikers outside of the book. Um, the the radio series. I think it's. I think it's very very good. Um, uh, then then it's a TV show. And yeah, as Andy Magic Knight said, they didn't make a film. <laughs> They really did. The, the annoying thing with the film is it started off like it could have been all right, but they just, I don't know, they just went pear-shaped very, very quickly. Um, it's made, it's still turns one in day, every format had slightly, yeah. Yeah, it's it's such a shame as well because that could have ended up being, you know, a long running film franchise, and they they spoiled it by doing that. And it will be it'll be a little while now um, before somebody attempts that again. But hopefully they do it properly. Um, 
what I would hope that they do is make a good uh, Netflix series like they did with the um, uh, the Dirk Gently Holistic Detective Agency spin-off, um, which was only very loosely based on uh, Dirk Gently in the books, but um, was still still quite good anyway. So um, I, I would like to see them do that. But maybe a little bit closer to the books than Dirk Gently was, but um, but better than than the uh, somehow. I mean, the the TV series, the original TV series, was very good as well. Uh, and whenever I think of Arthur Dent in my mind, that's who I see. I see the Arthur Dent. Um, I forget his name now, Simon. <sighs> I can't remember his name, but I, I I see the original Ford Prefect and Arthur Dent from the from the TV show. That's who I see. Um, okay, so now we're just copying. See, this is what, what's bothering me here is um, there is quite a bit of code duplication here, kind of. Um, I'm going to leave it though for now um, and we'll just move this up. So, so what I'm trying to do now is create another page. So we've got nine lines of text that we can add to this page. And I want to create some kind of how to play thing. So, and then maybe if we've got room, we'll add some sprites to this page as well. As I said, I'm not too fussed if we have to reduce the level count slightly. I don't think it's going to affect it too massively. So, okay. So I think we'll start with, well, let's just see if that works. Hopefully that gives us a how to play page. Why is that not loaded? Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. There we go. Oh, why is it putting why is it put that over there? Blank. And this. Oh, what's oh hang on, is this because we've gone over our Oh no, we haven't. Oh, why is it doing that then? Uh, okay, I see no reason why this would be failing. Okay, this is this is weird. Let's try that again. Was it the bite zero? Oh yeah, maybe. I can't, I can't think why though. That would be strange if it was though. But yeah, maybe. It's definitely done something odd here. Uh, okay, let me just take a quick look at this. So as Grey Defender says, there was a byte zero here like that. So I'm going to do the same down here. Oops. And I think I might change the, the format of this a little, the format of this uh, text a little bit um, to make this a more generic system rather than copying huge chunks like this um, so i'm going to show uh, some good uses of macros uh, here uh, to, to do this this next piece uh, of code so uh, first of all let's just try and get this working because there's a lot of wasted space here as well this this could very easily be turned into um into functions that, that deal with this in a little bit of a better way so Oh, I think you were right. I think the byte zero was doing something. I'm not sure what it was doing, but it looks like it was. Interesting. Because that seems to be working fine now. 
Okay, cool. Let's let's convert this. I'll, I'll explain what I'm going to do. Uh, so I did have a bit of a heat. I, first of all, I want to apologize to anybody who was in the chat yesterday and to every, anybody I may have offended. Um, I did get kind of a little bit irate um, in chat. Uh, in discord yesterday um, i'm not going to go over what it was about um, um you can go back and read that if you really want to um uh but it's essentially boiled down to whether um, macros and variables are useless or not i am going to show you why they're not useless in fact this is already kind of showing you why they're not useless but i'm going to i'm going to show you even further why they're not useless so what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a macro in here. I'm going to call it, uh, it probably needs to live just outside this actually, uh, because otherwise it won't be callable. There we go. I'm going to call this uh, print text. Uh, and then what we're going to do in here So we're going to have another one here, which is going to be um, macro reset line. Okay, so we're going to have two functions or, or two macros which are going to do various things. Um, one is going to uh, reset the the screen pointer to uh, to the top um, again to the first line to this line here. Um, and then this is going to print a, a line of text on that line in a given color at a certain offset. Uh, and that's going to allow us to uh, reduce the amount of space that these take up quite considerably uh, and the amount of space that all this is taken up quite considerably. So that's what we're going to work on now. Um, um, Uh, what are you on about? Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do. I do apologize. I did get a little bit irate yesterday. I, I had, um, I was quite tired. I'd had a bit of a tough day, and I just wasn't in the mood for, uh, for it. So I do apologize if I was a bit aggressive. Okay, so what I need now is I need two variables in zero page, uh, which we've got plenty of room for. You can see here we're still. Still got room in zero page, so I'm going to make them unique to the intro. No need for these to be separate. Uh, two columns. There we go. Uh, uh, yeah, I try not to. I try not to lose it. On, I, I don't lose it very often, to be honest. So I, I tend to be. Um, we we tend to be uh, I tend to be quite calm usually, but I I just wasn't in the mood for um for us for the certain um the the way it was being kind of uh, put. To, I, I, anyway, I'm not gonna. You can you can read read back through the general channel and it's all there. Okay, so um I'm gonna create one called screen tagger here. Thank you for the follow AZZPR. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this looks very good. Oh, we haven't even started yet, really. I've not. Um, well, we've started. I mean, we haven't even shown anything for a while yet. So, um, we shall see. We shall see how it works. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two targets. These are going to be used as our, our zero page indirect lookups. One is going to be for color ramp, uh, and one is going to be for screen ramp. And when I reset these, these values in the macro down here. Uh, reset line is just going to call a function in here. I'm going to pre preface these with it. Now, the reason I'm using macros for both of these is um, actually there is no real reason to use macros for both of these, but um, I'm going to just for consistency, I think this one is literally just going to call that. That's not really going to do very much, and there's going to be no parameters that get passed into here. Uh, but what this is going to do is going to set these values in here. Um, so this is the this is the start basically of the first the first line. So let's 
So this is the this is the very first line, uh, and that can be stored at. Uh, I'm going to call these intro and intro color amp because they already exist. So I don't want to. There we go. So this is going to ensure that our line always goes back to the top of the screen. Um, and then we can we can do various things as we move through. So for instance, if we have advanced line here, this is going to knock the line down one row. Um, and that's going to be really simple to do. We just take our intro screen RAM. I need to change that to intro color RAM here. Um, I need to add 28 to it there, uh, which is 40. Um, uh, uh, can you go for a smoke so I can, <laughs> can you go for a smoke? I can't read that last bit, damn it. Oh, so you can quickly read the drama. It wasn't really drama. It was just a heated discussion. It's just that rather than keep it civil, I, I got a little bit kind of, um, as, it, as it went on, I got I lost my patience a little bit. That's all. Which was, which is quite bad of me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. And I certainly, I certainly don't mean to offend anybody at all. So the reason I store, um, it in the color ramp here as well is because the lower byte is going to match on both of these. Uh, and then what I can do is I can use the carry flag uh, to just increment the other ones as well. So I can increment this one. And this is just going to save us a couple of bytes by doing this. Speed is not that important here at all, um, but but bytes are, which is why we're doing this in the first place. So that's going to advance on to the next row. So now we've got a way of resetting the line and um, advance in the line so the other thing we need to do now is uh to to print a line so um i am going to put mac in front of this because it's going to get called from this one here uh print text and what we're going to be passing in here is a pointer well the pointer to the text will um actually yeah that's a good point and we need that as well so intro So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a uh, pointer to text in a X. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to store the accumulator uh, in intro text pointer plus zero and store X in intro text pointer plus one. Uh, y will be our offset. Uh, but our upper nibble will be color. So so now we transfer Y to the accumulator. Um, and then we can shift this to the right four times. Oops. And now we have our color. Put that in X. Okay, so X now contains the color that we want to, to print in. Uh, and now we need our offset. So our offset is in the lower nibble in here. So And there we go. So now Y contains our offset. 
and X contains our color. Uh, let's just go and have a look at our utility functions. Uh, so I am going to put a byte zero on the end of these now. So it's going to print out our string and put a zero on the end. So then what we do in here is really simple. Um, we have a loop in here, and that loop is going to take the value that's at our intro text pointer, comma y. If it's zero, we're finished. Oops. By the way, what I want to do here is just look at these things here. So we're going up to 7 dB at the moment. So that's the target we're trying to be. We're trying to reduce that down to do exactly the same as what we're doing now, uh, but reducing it down. So Oh, God, I've not heard this for a while. OK, uh, so if it's equal to 0, we jump to exit, which is here, and then we, we exit here. Uh, the next thing that exit will do is advance line. Because as soon as you printed a line of text, you jump onto the next line. Otherwise, what we do is we, we print that text to the screen. So we're going to store that at. Um, Oh, hang on. Oh, we need two different numbers here, don't we? OK. Uh, OK, no, this is fine. This is fine. So what I'm going to do instead of this is I'm going to put intro text color here. And we're going to store this. This is going to be a self mod here. So, S mod plus one, S mod plus two. So, this is where we get our text from. Uh, I'm going to store that color intro text color here. Okay. So I read our text line in. If it's fine, we then store it at intro screen ramp comma y because of our offset here. Then we can load intro text color like so, and then we increase X and increase Y. Uh, and because these will never be zero, we can immediately do a branch if not equal to S mod. Well, let's just do it with the actual, like that, there we go. So this will now print a line of text in whatever color we set it up. So this is what we need to do here. So we'll have, uh, uh, text uh, address uh, color offset or oh, let's do offset color don't know why it just seems better that way for some reason okay so in order to print this now so we need to put these things together so let's do that here Oh, temperature control is really difficult in this room at the moment. Um, how's everybody's lag tonight, by the way? I I did some changes on the bitrate and stuff. So I've gone down from uh, 5,000 to 4,000 on my bitrate. Uh, and I've changed to a few different um, settings. So I don't know if that's improved or made it worse for people. Um, 
as I know some people have complained that that other other streams seem to be lag free and then and then my stream seems to always be behind or vice versa so so it'd be good to know if it's it's um if it's improved for anybody who who had it bad so it's never bad uh, yeah cuz I did something and it fixed for you it was a server change for you wasn't it Andy I think that, that made it better for you Okay, so we've got text address, which goes in A and X, and then we've got this that goes in Y. So let's sort the Y out first. Uh, so the final thing we're going to be doing is is jump into this routine here. Um, so Y is, the upper nibble is going to be the color, and the lower nibble is going to be the offset. So what we need is to take the color value uh, and shift it to the left four. Uh, and I am going to put that in a separate set of brackets because it's a pain. Uh, music is a little loud. God, I can't win with this music, can I? Maybe I need to get, um, maybe I need to set a compressor or something up on the overlay manager. Hang on. Uh, oh, I've already got a compressor on it. Oh, because it's tied to my microphone. I'll do some tests off stream. I can probably. I can probably do uh, a compressor or an expander or something and um, and make it work. But yeah, that song did go very loud. Do you know it reminded me? Do you know um, one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite things is uh, the cheese shop sketch from um, uh, Monty Python. And he walks into the cheese shop and there's a, there's a couple of guys in the corner who are just playing some instruments fairly quietly in the corner. And you don't think anything of them. But as the, as the, uh, as the, as the sketch goes on, they're getting louder and louder and louder until eventually he just turns around and tells them to shut up. Uh, and it's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just so, so good. Because uh, you don't even think about it, but after a while you think, God, yeah, they are getting really loud. Yeah. It reminded me of that. It was just getting louder and louder and louder as the uh, as the stream went on. So, uh, okay. So, take the color and add the offset. So, obviously, this means our offset is limited to fifteen at most. Uh, but in all honesty, we shouldn't need to offset anything by fifteen across the screen. Uh, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, and then the pointer to the text. So, uh, accumulator is our least significant bit. So we're going to take that. Uh, text address like so there we go and so you can see now to print uh, a line of text we only need to do this uh, this is all that's going to be in in our code up here so instead of this uh, so it is three bytes Sorry, three, uh, one, two, three, six bytes, nine bytes, plus a bit of overhead. We're now doing it in, well, it's still nine bytes, but there's no overhead anymore. Uh, and we also reduce all of these spaces down as well. So these stop being like this. Um, and, and start having less spaces in them. So first of all, I just want to, I, I mean, I've recorded, did I record the, yeah, I did. Okay, no, I don't need to run it, all right. Uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna take, I am gonna take a quick break now. Um, so I do need to go to the toilet. When I come back, we will, we'll see if we can reduce it down from this and produce something that's a little bit easier to, to deal with. And then it should be really easy to deal with the rest of the, uh, the intro then. Uh, okay, I'll be back in, uh, Five minutes, guys. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. God, what is that? Doesn't look very fun, whatever it is. Was that a post box? Post box in the desert. Super stock. Oh, it's ah uh, crap. Okay, I do know that game. It's actually quite good, <laughs> to be fair. Oh, 
Well, it's not terrible anyway. It's okay. So now we have a routine which should be able to display these things. So let's give that uh, give that a go. So now this means we can reduce these down quite a bit. So let's have a look at the, our offsets here. So this is offset zero. This is offset three. So let's let's just try the first two lines. Um, actually, let's do it on let's do it on this lot here. Just want to see if this works first because this is the page that it's displaying. So. So instead of doing all of this, what we can do now, hopefully, is we can say, okay, reset line. So we need to reset back to the beginning of the, the page and then print text. Now in here, we need um, a pointer to our, our text, an offset, which is zero, uh, and a color, which is, I believe it's blue, isn't it, for the for these ones? So blue like that. And this would be purple. So hopefully now we see two lines uh, on this page displayed correctly. Okay, so we've got some issues here. Oh, because we should be using tables.colorramis or something. Vic.coloram, that's it. I, I, I don't even know. I think I was trying to demonstrate a point with these, so. Okay, let's give that a quick try. I'm really looking forward to the uh, the next stream. It's, uh, it's gonna be kind of a fun, Competition, I think. Oh, Mac reset line, Mac. Wait, what? Unknown. Oh, because that name now needs to be title. One thing I would change about these macros is give them, allow them to use scope properly. Because uh, at the moment they don't use scope properly, and and it can be kind of a little bit frustrating uh, that you can't drop a macro into a scope. Um, they, they always have to be on the global scope, which means you have to then reference things like this all the time. Slightly annoying, but um, wait, what's going to happen on the next screen? I'm giving away three Raspberry Pi 400 kits. Um, so that seemed to work, yeah. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi creators create the Raspberry Pi 400, which is a Pi 400. Um, I'll answer that in a second. So that's, it's a it's a Pi 4 in a keyboard. Looks like this. Um, it's actually slightly faster than a Pi 400. It's basically an, o an overclocked Pi 400 because they have got some cooling in here as well. Um, but what they've done... And it's official uh, Raspberry Pi as well. It's it's by those. It's an actual Raspberry Pi machine. Um, but what they've done is they've created a starter kit, which allows you to get the Raspberry Pi 400, all the leads, a mouse, uh, basically everything that goes um, goes into uh, setting up a Raspberry Pi computer. So you don't need to buy anything extra. Oh, it is a newer chip. I thought it was the same chip, but I didn't know it was a newer one. That's kind of cool. All right, it probably explains why some of the stuff doesn't run properly on it. Um, okay, let me just read that message from Snaps. When you said earlier about the cassette 50 thing, you say you can just do the usual basic upstart two and then just write two kilobytes of code. Don't have to worry about the memory addresses as you sort them out later. If you write two kilobytes of code um, from basic upstart two, you will, you'll end up at, um, so basic upstart two inserts some code at that location, inserts some basic at that location. Basically, it points to some code which will start round about this position. So if you then add two kilobytes of code, you will be at... So you will be slightly over. But if you do just a couple of bytes, like 20 bytes less, then you will you will end up at that location. Um, but you can still store stuff down. So you'd move all your variables. So what you would do 
let me just demonstrate quickly here. So you would do something like this, right? Okay, so now this code here is, is basically uh, uh, at this location. Yeah, and you can keep writing code all the way down until your end is at this location so when you when you check in in your output it comes down to this location but what you can do and i what i would recommend and i will be pointing this out is if you set um some variable space so for instance um one of the things you can do is you can load x with uh like 20 or something like that and do that now what this is does is it transfers this to the stack pointer you know your stack lives at 100 to 1 ff that's where your stack is and normally it's up it starts at the top so the, the top of the stack is where it, it works um but if you if the very first thing you do is you move the stack pointer down to here what you're now doing you just say now the top of the stack is actually here so now you can you know if you did like one f now your stack is here so then what you can do is up here you can have So now you've got space for all your variables here. So you can put all your all your stuff that you want to store things in here. Um, they won't get overwritten at the beginning, but now whenever you whenever you want to store anything from in here, it can be stored in that area, and you're not wasting code here. But I'll I'll go through all of this in in more detail in a in a in in a, a post a little bit uh, later on this week, I think. Uh, one sec. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if you don't get 50 entries, or you, it doesn't have to be 50. It's just that the original game was called uh, Cassette 50, so... Uh, maybe a, a one-off stream on tricks for cassette fit. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Um, hey, Zendari, welcome. Um, and all you have to do is make sure it loads in Vice. If you can load it in Vice and it doesn't it doesn't um, doesn't use memory addresses after that point, then we will work out how to get it onto tape. So. Um, Okay. Um, okay. So that did actually print two lines, which is good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this work for. Where's it gone? Here, here we go. I wanted to offset that by three. I'm going to make this work for um, the credits, and then I shall move this into the credits page down here, and we'll work on we'll work on doing the main page stuff. Uh, so same again. So what I'm doing is I'm just removing all the white space. Don't need the bytes here on the end now because it's automatically added by the, this this uh, function. Um, And so we need two more like that, and then one with double on the end. So let's see, two more like that, and then one with another one here like that. And now lines wise, there's probably needs to be a blank line here, here, and here. Yes, blank lines here. So this is where, uh, this comes in handy. Now, if I run this, hopefully. Uh, 
Uh, Mini Mate does look pretty good. I've uh, been following that on and off for a while. It's a Paul Nichols game, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that looks fine. Cool. I mean, it's going to screw up when it goes onto the other pages, but yes, that looks fine. So let's move that into credits now. So there we go. That's our credits page. So we get rid of all of this. And it just becomes that. So this is credits. And we can probably do some clever stuff with the uh the clearing the page as well um although actually this probably this might actually be quicker yeah this is probably quicker actually okay but now we can do the same thing on on here okay so i'm going to copy this this here and I'm just going to change this to page zero like that I mean obviously this will change to whatever text we want to put in here but you can see now that it's going to be pretty easy for us to to, to save some space so our original code went to 7ddb so let's check that now Okay, we've got what oh there we go. Yeah, so we're just the wrong page. Okay, so we saved seventeen nine B. So we're producing the same oops, where's it gone? Yeah. So we've saved sixty four bytes by doing that. Uh, but create something that's going to be a lot easier for us to to work with. Oh, cool! So he's put a demo up early today. Awesome! Might have to check that out at some point. Okay, uh, I don't know why those have been offset. Have I offset done something wrong in, in here? I uh, forgot to delete these. Oh, so there's even more to, to be re removed. So actually we've saved even more, hang on. Seven D three B. So actually we saved a lot more. So 160 bytes we've saved. That's pretty good. Right, getting to the end of that. So let's try this Y now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a. It's gonna be really deep red, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, this is going to be difficult to drink at any space, so. Actually, that's very nice. Yeah, I like that. That's, I really like that, actually. I should be getting more of that. Interesting. Okay, cool. So we now have a way of printing something to the screen, different colors on each line. Um, so the next step is to think about what we want to to put on the on the first page. Uh, so we've got our credits up here. So I would suggest we do something like how to play. And then we, we put some information here. So um, the question is, what what information do we put? So let's think about it. What do we need to what do we need to get across? Uh, let's let's have a look at the points we need to get across here. Uh, let's just do a block of comments. So um, 
well, we can we we should talk about the order of things that we do, right? So, um, uh, hit enemies to stun them. Uh, eat stunned enemies to gain weight. Uh, oh my god, was that over that quick? What happened then? Did did uh, I'm not sure what happened then? Did did you uh, did you get it or not? You got that one because I noticed you put at docs to me first. So oh no, you did do yeah. I'm not sure how that would have worked. Did you did you get it for that or I didn't see you got it. Ah uh, <laughs> yeah, because it would have put it would have put the at at the beginning. So. So I don't know who got that. I guess, uh, well, actually, Steps, you probably got that, I guess. Okay. Damn, that's a shame. Okay, so hit hit enemies to stun them. Eat stunned enemies to gain weight. Um, clear enemies. Clear all enemies. To reveal, uh, to activate, switch. Clear all enemies to activate, to enable, enable, switch. This is going to need this is going to need cutting down to be more concise. So this is going to be difficult. Uh, clear, clear all enemies to enable us. The exit switch. Hit the exit. Switch to reveal the exit door. I don't think that needs explaining more than that. I think that's enough, which would probably be reduced though. Um, and then this is the additional information here. So, um, uh, coloring platform will give you a points bonus this is tricky I don't know how to work though right, let's let's work out the first section first so how many characters across do we get so we're positioning at 10 across so I would say we've got 30 is probably a bit too much. Let's say 28 characters across. Because actually this... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Yeah, I'd say 28 characters is enough. Okay, so let's put a marker on here for what 28 is. So... Oops. Is that right? Let's do it like this. All right, let's do it like that. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's ten. Then 
try. I've got to say, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, top of three. Okay, so we shouldn't go past this character here. We can go up to this character, but not past it. Okay, so... Uh, no, let's put that on another line. This is quite difficult, actually. Get enemies to stun them. Eat stunned. Enemies. Yeah, this is this is difficult. <laughs> Hit enemies to stun them. And then eat them to gain weight. There we go. Clear all enemies to enable the level exit switch. Hit the level. Exit switch. Okay, so that, that can be definitely one screen, and that should fit. And we might just about be able to draw the switch in here as well. Um, we've got five, ten. We've got 12 lines um, of space, and we're using, oh, my God. Oh, actually, the font is different on this screen as well, though, I think. Oh, this might be tricky. Oh, no, it's not, actually. No, it's not. Okay. We might be able to get the switch in here. Okay. So this could be the first, first page. So we've got, okay, we've got how to play here. So that's three lines. Hit enemies to stun them and gain weight, right? So... So let's think about this three, four, five, six, seven. So that means we've got five more lines here. So if I did like that, then I could show I could show some sprites here. To show the enemies being stunned and gaining weight, I think. Um, and then level switch can definitely be fit into this gap here. Okay, let's let's put that in as one on screen. Okay, so how to play. Okay. 
Okay. Then there'd be three lines of space. And then two lines of space. Okay, so, so we don't need these two. Those two belong here. These are both zero, I believe. Two more here. Three lines of space. Okay, let's see how that looks. Hey, Carlton, how's it going? Uh, was the news in the only interview I phoned in was appearing on the S3. <laughs> Hey, Raceland, how's it going? Oh, why's that not loading? Welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing well. Um, okay, I wonder if we can move that down one line. Maybe we can, we can, maybe we can sneak another line in there as well. I'm a bit worried about space here. But I think I think we hit the limits of what we can fit in here actually. So let's let's just see. If I if I move if I move this down one more line, I don't think it's gonna work though. I don't think it's gonna give us enough space. I'm just passing by getting late for you. Ah, nice to see you anyway. Um so for those who don't know, uh, Racelin is running uh, a competition on CSDB at the moment uh, to win a Mega 65 dev kit, which I've got next to me here. Um, it's a, a sprite only competition. I think it can be a game or a demo. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. Uh, but basically, you can only use sprites. You can't use character modes. Uh, but the winner gets a, a Mega 65 dev kit, which is pretty awesome, to be honest. Um, also, I just to go back to uh, what I was saying on on the last stream. I will be giving away in either January or February. It depends how quickly I can um, how quickly I can make um, make one of the boards up. But I'll be giving away um, a Mega sixty five Nexus. Uh, well, it's a Nexus. Uh, I forget the name of it now. AT100 FPGA board um, with the Mega 65 core flashed onto it. Uh, so as long as you've got a VGA monitor and a, a USB keyboard, you should be able to basically use it like a Mega 65. It will it will run the software like a Mega 65. Um, I'll be giving that away in uh, January or February. I'm not sure yet. It depends. Um, but yeah, that's uh, so. There's a few few opportunities for for people to join in and, and get those things. Um, thankfully, I already have a, a, a Mega 65 because I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, um, of CSDB, so I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be um, comfortable entering it through that. But um, that's fine. You know, plenty of people do. People know my beef with CSDB, so it's fine. Um, okay, why is that not loading? What have I done? 
Uh, okay, yeah, so we can't use this bottom one because of this scroller here. And because we're using zones for the splits here, that's not going to be an easy thing to fix. Um, because we, we're using an offset here. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's try moving everything up by one line and see if that works as well. I don't think it will do, but let's give it a try anyway. Um, just trying to work out exactly how much how much uh, room we get on here. Uh, reset line. Oh, actually, that's uh, there's a location that we can save. Let's get rid of that. I don't need to do that twice. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's move that to seven. Let's just see if that works. I don't think it will do, but let's just try it anyway. Oh yeah, this is worth pointing that out as well. It's not um it's not CSDB you're giving it away. CSDB is just the release platform for it. Um the the Mega 65 is coming from Racelink directly. So uh yeah, very generous. You wouldn't see me giving mine away, that's for sure. Okay, yeah, so we can't use the split up here either. I could probably move these splits. There's quite a lot of gap here, but I don't think there's much point for the sake of two or three lines of of text on the screen so uh, let's just put that back to that okay uh and what are we saving memory right yeah we're saving quite a bit of memory by doing this so that's pretty good so we could reduce this down a little a bit maybe um Clear all enemies. Helps if I spell that right. And see, there you go. That's that's reduced it down a little bit more. It's not quite going to fit, is it? Hit the. Clear. Uh, clear all. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So, so now if we did this with spacing, let's think about this. So, uh, if I reduce this down to this. Hit enemies to stun and eat them to gain weight. There we go. Clear all enemies, comma, hit the level exit switch, comma. Uh, no, maybe what I'm trying to do is is just kind of make things a little bit more um in line with the other other pages. Okay, so let's do this. <clears throat> so then if I have three lines in here, so one, two, three, that's six. Yeah, this might work. Okay, cool. So zero, one, and two. So we will pad these out by two, like so. So don't need those there. I don't need those there. Okay, that makes that a little bit smaller. It's text my own macro. Yes, so it's a macro to um, 
convert the text from um from petsky values to the value that match values that match our font so uh oh well, i'm so far behind on my chat god damn it i don't know why that scrolled up <laughs> games tied on macros i i've already yeah I, i'm not gonna go into that anymore as i say uh, uh, don't use the word exit twice in the same sentence. Am I doing that? And reveal, reveal the door. There we go. Hit the. I'm going to keep that as exit door and find a way to reduce this. So, hit the. Hit the. Clear all enemies, hit the enabled switch, maybe hit the active switch to reveal the exit door. I feel like that should be an and there rather than a comma. There we go. Are macros better than McNuggets? Oh. For the 4K comp, I wrote a macro to calculate the length of strings to save determination by. It seemed clever at the time. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, actually it was a suggestion of four eyes because I was uh, originally I was just I was doing it in code, just adding the values, and then four said you may as well just make a macro to do it. Uh, actually, it's not even a macro. I think it's a I think it's a function. Oh no, it is a macro. Yeah, yeah, it is a macro. Never mind. Oh, the function is for this, which actually works out based on the character values what we should be adding to it or not. Uh, so we can we can. We can dot kind of characters around the char set uh, quite easily, and and not um not have to worry about where they actually are in the uh in the font in relation to uh, Petsky values. So okay, so what I'm going to suggest now is that we knock these lines down by two like this so like that and then like that and then what this will do is it will give us a space to put some sprites in and so it's going to be a very specific setup for this screen but we can do that now saved about six bytes well i oh, see it's still not quite enough I was kind of hoping it would save a bit more space than that. I feel like it, I feel like I do need to move these values up and down. I'm going to see if I can tweak that um, the IRQ split. Uh, thanks for the follow, Alfus. Alfus, and welcome to the stream. Cheers. I enjoyed Enjoy Eraser on the C64. I'm not sure if it was any good or not. Um, I was, I didn't have many racing games. I think I had that, and I, well, not not that kind of style racing game anyway. The the Into the Screen. I got Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge a bit later on, and I really enjoyed that. I thought it was quite cool. Um. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to have a go at just tweaking the IRQ slightly on that page. I, I, this is probably going to mess up massively, but um, I'm just wondering if we can move. I oh, don't know, because there's so many zone things that need to be changed around that. Um, I 
Okay, so let's let's take a look in the debugger. The debugger is going to be a really good way to see what's going on here. The best racing game, hands down, is is Slicks. As I was trying to tell Chiz the other night, it's just it's so good. Okay, so this is where one split is. What? Oh. <laughs> oh my god, that tricked me. I honestly thought I had a Skype call then. I haven't had Skype turned on for ages. Don't know if he wrote in Jira Race, the easiest shittiest thing he coded. He was the he was A of A and F and wrote Chucky for C. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, it was still pretty good. <laughs> okay, so this is the problem here. Um, the, the, we've got a split that happens at that point there that changes the changes the character set. If we can change it a little bit earlier, so if we change it here in the middle of that split instead of here we can get an extra line out of it. So let's have a look at that. So this is in, I don't know which zone this is in, but we, if we just, we can, there's not a lot going on in this area. So we can just put a delay in and wait for the line in that case. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look through here for uh, where our stupid zone thing. I hate this system. This is easily the worst thing about, um, about this entire game is this stupid system that I set up. It seemed like a good idea at the time, and now it's just a cumbersome mess. Um, I don't even know where it is. It's got to be. It's going to be in here somewhere. Is it like this one? Yeah, it's this one, isn't it? Um, and it's by far the worst piece of code in the whole whole game. I I really hope no one has to come in here and and work out this because <laughs> I can't even work it out half of the time. So I think it's this one here. So if I just, uh, let's just put a, a, an increment border color in here. We should be able to see if that's in, if that's actually the right place or not, because it will, it will flicker at the side. Yeah, so it is this one here. So what we're going to do, uh, just put that back in the debugger. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to cheat it a little bit so that the, the the split is happening here and then so this is sprite line two sprite line three sets uh does this basically based on whether or not we're in a bonus or not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this chunk here And I'm going to move this. So I'm not going to do it here. In fact, I'm just going to comment this out because do that. And instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it in this this routine here. So I'm going to let this routine go through like normal. And then here, when it normally would jump to finished, we're going to put this piece of routine in instead. Um, this is a normal entertainer. How did somebody find this version? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for a very specific line here. So this is this is where it gets a bit tricky. So this is roundabout line 5B. So we're going to wait to maybe 6.6 six or something. So... And I've done that in completely the wrong place, haven't I? Yeah. Let's do that here. There we go. So now I think what that will do is it will change that a little bit earlier. So I hope it does anyway. 
might need to change that branch if not equal to a branch if uh, carry clear instead. Oh, because, yeah, look at that. It's doing strange things now. Okay, let's do that. I'll get this right in a minute. Okay, so that's not having any fun at all there. I'm not entirely sure why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment the border here just to see where that's actually happening. I'm going to comment that chunk out and I'm going to put the old chunk back in just to make sure that we confirm that we haven't broken anything. Oh, God, there's so many flashing colors going on in here. Um, so I want to get rid of that one. Let's do it in here. So this is just an effort to try and squeeze a little bit more space out of the out of the screen here. Um, so it's still happening above there. So it should be fine down here. Just waiting for this line here should be fine. Okay, let's let's do this comparison a different way then. Let's uh thank you for the follow, Rotter Chonzi. Uh welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well on this gloriously cold Saturday evening. Uh let's do if it's less than that value, jump to there. So we'll do it this way round. We'll we'll be I think that's all I was doing. I was just doing the comparison the wrong way around. I think this would probably be all right now. So I was playing Horace this week, and it was the bit where you could program an old computer type. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> uh... I found a cool bit in... Um... In Cyberpunk today, I, I was uh, chasing some. Uh, oh, okay, that's not quite done what I was expecting. Um, I was chasing some. Uh, that's weird. I was chasing some uh, uh, a taxi thing that had been uh, taxi AI that had been uh, corrupted, and it sounded like Glados from Portal. Um, and it was going on about cake and tests and stuff. It's quite funny. It's a nice little Easter egg. Ah, okay. So problem is is this here. We jump into these. So if I just uh, if I change that to that, that should work. Okay, cool. The cake is a lie. Yeah, that's basically what the the taxi told me as well. It was, it was just it was just I thought it was rather funny that they they put that in kind of cool nice little uh, throwback to Paul. Um, it was it was probably relevant when they put it in. There, there we go. I mean that game has been in production for a long time, so. Okay, I think that's kind of almost in the right place now. Let's see where it's happening. Uh, so it's happening. Okay, now let's just knock it back slightly. So let's do it there. Okay, cool. That should hopefully give us what we require. I just need to turn this block off. And now we can test that by moving this line back one. We will need to add some extra light. So the clearing side of things, I think I can speed this up. This is not a very efficient way of doing things. Um, 
uh, I will uh, not speed it up, uh, make it more efficient. This is a terribly inefficient way of doing things, but I will, I will sort that out in a minute. I just want to see if this has gained me an extra line of text. It has indeed. Doesn't seem to have broken anything as well. Let me just check the bonus screen. I just want to make sure that uh, bonuses are working. No, oh, I can turn them on down here, can I? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's just get off this screen because uh, I know that the bonus screen is going to have some issues and the high score screen is going to have some issues as well. So we're going to need to work on those a little bit. But this should give us a bit more room to add sprites and stuff into the, to the main screen. Okay, it doesn't seem to have broken the bonus, which is good. So let's just exit the game. I, I know that the pick and mix logo is not showing properly in the high score table. So that's one area we definitely need to work on. So it's just showing this one here. And we know that the high score table has some entry issues. So we need to look at that at some point. Um, but that's fine. I want to get the intro in place. I can work out the little bugs uh, at a later date. Uh, but this is kind of fine. Okay. Oh, and there's this one here as well. Okay. So I don't know how this happens, but it does happen. Uh, so on the title card screen, we need to make sure two things happen to this particular sprite. That it's D010 is set to the correct value. Uh, and that it's multicolor is set to the correct value as well. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at that while it's on my mind. Uh, and then we'll try and move the 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 positioning further down the screen for the other for the other area to gain one more line. If we can get one more line out, then um, we'll look pretty decent, I think. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I believe title screen is going to be this one, isn't it? All right. Okay, this looks like it should be setting those values automatically. Um, maybe it's not updating them all the time. Maybe there's uh, some delay that means it doesn't work properly at the right point, in which case I can just move. If I just move that from there, uh, I mean, there would be fine. That would work. Let's see if I can replicate that that issue. Let's try to do the same thing again. We see now how I can I can add another line in here, and that should give me some more room to. to hopefully, create some. Um, sprite animations to explain the, the stuff that I'm on about here. Uh, good night, Twitch Igor. Thanks for joining. Okay, cool. So I think what I did was died over this side of the screen, so... I think that's all I did actually. Okay, no, it hasn't moved it, it's still down there. Interesting. Um Okay, well, it's a bug we can work out later. It's fine for now. Let's see. Have I got enough space with that extra line? What is this? Charm app. The hell is this? Oh, 
Oh, this is for the scroller. Okay. Okay, so if I add another line in there now, and add another line in there, is that going to be enough? I bet it's not, but let's... I think I need to move one more down. Yeah, okay, so we need one more down here to to properly gain enough space. That's fine. Um, let's go back to here again. Oh, let's just make a 65, not the... They look too similar, those things. Okay, so... The final split is down here. Uh, and you can see that it, far too soon it changes. So it changes around about here, which means the bottom half of it is being destroyed. Uh, so we just need to delay that change a little bit. Uh, not by much, uh, but we just need to delay it a couple of lines. <laughs> creatures i remember being amazed by that um that noise at the beginning that thing falling i thought it was incredible i mean now i look back and i think it's actually quite a simple thing but it was just a nice little touch yeah this wine is quite hard to drink actually it's nice though So I'm hoping um, this week to do another Mega 65 video on um, the extended instruction set. Um, so kind of more about the 65 CEO 2 than it is the uh, uh, than it is about the uh, the Mega 65. Although I will touch on some of those, uh, and I'm hoping to start work on my uh, multiplexer this week. So I've got an idea that's going to allow me to put 12 sprites on a line. Um, I need to do some tests, but I think I can get it to work. Um, I, at least the algorithm in my head seems to work. I need to draw it on paper and just make sure that it will will work. But I think it can be done. I need to test a few basic properties uh, to see if they behave the way I think they behave. Um, but if they do, then I can get 12 sprites on a line. Uh, yeah, 12 non-flickering sprites on a line. So basically... Uh, drawing eight on a line and then as soon as the the last sprite is drawn reusing sprites from the beginning of the line so because it's that fast you can basically you can you can get sprites to to redraw several times on a line in theory you could get um you could use one sprite over the whole screen in theory it'd be difficult but how do you instruct the Mega 6 CC to a Twitch code on each specific chip as far as there's more than one CPU? No, there's only one CPU emula emulated. Um, so the thing is, is the um, the Mega 65 is emulating the Commodore 65. So what they've done is they've um, they they've emulated the Commodore 65 chip. And the Commodore 65 chip is compatible with the Commodore 64, as long as you don't use illegal opcodes. The illegal opcodes have been taken over by new instructions, new opcodes. Um, so that's how that works. And then the Mega 65 stuff is, there's only a few things that are specific to the Mega 65, but they're, 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 they're kind of compound opcodes. So it's like, if you do a NOP before you do this, then this instruction behaves slightly differently. So it's using NOPs to do specific things um but you can hide all that with the with the um with the assembler anyway uh so for instance you can do um load q uh q register which is a 32-bit compound register um so you can load that with um the contents the 32-bit content style at that address but what that will do is in in um when you assemble that, it will probably do something like this. It will create two knobs and then a load 2000, something like that. So it will do some kind of crazy stuff with knobs to, to make those, uh, those extra instructions. Uh, those 32 bit things are really good as well. Like one of the, one of the best things about it is you've now got, um, 
as well as increment, you've now got So this is an 8-bit increment, this is a 16-bit increment, and this is a 32-bit increment. So this will actually increment a word at an address. So you can actually, you don't have to do the compare, the, you know, the carry bits and things like that. So it's really nice. Um, okay, so what I'm looking for is another breakpoint in the sprite list somewhere. Uh, it's going to be down here, isn't it, in this horrible mess? Okay, so this is the one we just did that we've now removed. There's going to be another one. I think it's this one here. Uh, there is, yes, okay, it's this bit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this bit here. I'm going to slap this into this gap here. And I'm just going to move that line down a little bit. So I'm just going to check in here where that line currently is. So it's currently round about DA. I'm going to try and move it down to like DE, I think I'll move it down to. So like that. There we go. Oh, not quite. See, it just needs maybe one extra line. Boom, there we go. So we've got some extra lines in here now. So we do need to clear one, one more line at the bottom. So I'm going to do that now, and I'm going to change this method to clear these better. So... At the moment, this is what's happening. We're doing this horrible mess of code here. Um, but essentially, it's just clearing that entire block in the middle. So it doesn't need to do it in quite this way. Um, we're clearing four, five, 14 lines. So uh, 14 times 40 so 560 lines uh, uh, slightly annoying that it's not uh, a nice even power of two but if we do yeah if we do 200 lines no uh, let's, let's make it fairly accurate let's do 190 so if we do 190 lines starting at this position here um, like that So this is uh, 380, so uh, 380 in, in hexadecimal. I've got to get this right. Uh, on 24, okay, so 17, uh, C. Uh, there we go. Uh, hopefully that should clear the bottom line now when it me leaves this perfect so now we've got extra lines to play with that's really nice so we can probably move the credits down one row which i'm going to do now so this is the credits here so reset move down a line um and we are still, in fact, we're using less memory than we were before now. So because I've tidied up that um, screen clear, we've gone down to uh, 722. We were on DB before. So we've, with all that new stuff, we are still uh, about 180, 180 to 190 bytes saved by doing this. Uh, and we have a system that actually works much neater. And see, now we've got room to put some animations in here.
and we've got room to do another screen. Right, I'm going to take a quick break, guys. Uh, when I come back, we will uh, we'll add some sprites to that screen, uh, and then we'll have a think about the the next screen as well. I think I think this is starting to look and feel pretty strong for a first screen. It just needs those sprites. That's it, really. All right, I'll be back in um, a couple of minutes, five minutes or so. Be right back. There. You are. Okay, um, so the next step now is, first of all, I want to try and free a little bit of memory up because we are we are running out of memory a little bit uh, in this area. So I think what I'm probably going to do is move some stuff down to where the intro text is at the moment and move the intro text out of the way. Um, because what I want to do is free a bit of room up here to show the rest of the... We, we need a little bit more title stuff. And we're going to need uh, a bit of room to just animate a couple of sprites here. Nothing major, but... So we've got an IRQ down here. We've got some intro text here. So I'm going to move this intro text out of the way. And that's going to free us up about a kilobyte. Um, first of all, I need to figure out where the hell that intro text is. Oh, it's here. Okay, so let's move that. So that's going to be imported in here uh, somewhere here. There it is. So now I'm going to move this. I'm going to put this up here. Um, so we've got map assets. I think if I put it there, that will actually tack it on the end of our map data. So here's our map data. Level look up compressed levels. Oh, maybe not actually. So it needs to be after the compressor. Let's just see what that actually does. Uh, okay, so intro text. Oh, okay, so that actually went all the way up to there. So that's no good. Okay, so let's have a look how the maps are imported. So maps should be in, but so let's just, oh, that's no, going to do that now, isn't it? All right. So our maps are here. We have this assets folder. Ah, okay. Yeah, they're imported here. Okay, so I would have to kind of import it here, which is a little bit weird, but um, it is going to make sure it's up at the top rather than down at the bottom. So that should compile now. That's freed up this area here. So now I can move some stuff down into that. So I'm looking for something that's around about one kilobyte that I can slide into that area to free up some more room. That intro text is now fits up here, uh, which leaves us with the gap from, but the gap between these two basically to fit all our levels into. Um, so let's have a look. So we've got sound, which is a little bit more than one kilobyte. This is quite significantly less. It's too much. Soft sprites is significantly more. Crown is round about four kilobytes, but it's just a little bit too close. It needs to be a bit less than four. Hood. Oh, yeah, projectiles. Projectiles could be a good one. Door is possibly another good one. Let's try and move the door code. Oh. You can't hear me. Seriously? Is it just too far away? Is that better? Huh. Maybe it's because I was talking down or something. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, yeah, I must have just had it a bit far away. That's all. It's because this thing's it's like directional, I think. So since I got a new mic, okay. So I'm going to try and move the door code from here, and I'm going to try and put that here instead. Hopefully that fits nice and neatly into that gap. 
Um. <laughs> Have I been talking all this time? Yeah, see, that's that's a lot better. That that's actually filling that quite nicely. It leaves, yeah, what forty eight bytes or so in there, uh, and gives us a little bit of breathing room here now. So we've got about six hundred bytes or so here. Eight uh, E, so that's three, three and a half. No, no, a bit more actually. More like more like seven hundred. Um, Sixty-eight. Uh, oh, actually, quite a few. No, like eight hundred bytes. Actually, okay, that's nice. Eight hundred bytes. Cool. All right, that might be enough. So, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we uh, anything we add to the first page we clear as well. So we we printed all the text here, but now we want to add some sprites in the right places. This is where it's going to get a bit tricky with with the bonus screens and things like that causing us issues uh, with the way things reset, but hopefully we can we can do this properly. So let's start by checking which sprites we can actually affect here. Oh, we've also got the intro at the top, so we might have to be careful with when we actually change those sprites. Okay, let's let's have a look. So we might have to set like a, a I'm not going to do it through IRQs. I'm going to wait for a value. Um, I'm, I'm going to do the cheap way of waiting for IRQs. So when we get to this point, I'm going to set some stuff up. So we can pretty much use the first one, two, three. Okay, where's where's that sprite? There should be one down here. There we go. Oh no, we can't see. Look, that's in the middle. That's an annoying one. Okay, so we can use the first two. So we can use sprite zero, sprite one, and three, four, five. Okay, so zero, one, three, four, five. I've got update pages here, so I am going to add an update page for this one here. And I'm going to start by sprite zero. One, three, four, five. These are the sprites that we can we can edit. And I'm going to start just by doing a, a very simple check for uh, D zero one two at maybe this point here six six. Should I do let's do it like that actually. So what I'm trying to see now is can I can I edit that so that I can I, I want to see if I change my sprites at that point, is it gonna mess with the top one? I don't think so. Um well, there's only one way to find out. I don't want to mess with the IR keys because the IR keys are already kind of crazy set up. Uh, okay. Uh, ah, because we've already, ah, no, we've already got one split that's happening somewhere. So we're going to have to do this a little bit further along. So this is where we've got to be really, really careful with these things. So I'm going to do it there. Okay. So somebody give the most complicated answer to a simple 6502 question. Yeah, unfortunately, it does happen quite a lot. That's one of my pet peeves with the way um, computing and programming in general is, is taught. Actually, most most science 
seem to be on it of any kind is taught um, is that it tends to be overcomplicated and nobody gives real world like for instance maths no one ever really gives you real world examples um, for trigonometry so people get put off by trigonometry um, but it's incredibly useful so you, you should learn it but you know knowing how to measure the height of a tower by measuring the angle and it, nobody's nobody's does that in real life nobody's doing that nobody's you know when you're a when you're a kid you don't care if the that tower that happens to be exactly 800 meters away but its top is 23 degrees you know it, it's it's just it's it's silly so uh, there needs to be better ways of teaching these things fractions is another one as well fractions are incredibly useful and you should learn how to how to deal with fractions and ratios and things like that but they just never taught in interesting ways you'd imagine but yes exactly <laughs> exactly there, there's never any uh real world use for these things at all oh, i've just closed my intro i'm gonna damn it there we go I, I just find it annoying it's the same with computing as well computing is taught in a really weird way um, I actually think um, computing, computing when it's taught in university anyway, seems to be just about here's the terminology that you'll need for all of the things that you might possibly need um, for all the different different um, uh, sectors of IT that you might go into. I'm not going to teach you how to do any of those sectors, but we'll teach you the terminology. So that you can you can deal with those. They don't really teach you the individual things you need. Um, this is a shame. Anyway, I'm going off on one. Let's let's not go off on one. Uh, right. What I was trying to do was move that one update page. Update page. Where have you gone? Ah, this one here so I, i'm just trying to find a point at which i can change the sprites um so i mean this is doing weird stuff here but it's doing weird actually why is it doing with that when i do that there or maybe it's just because of the position of these so i'm not sure to be honest because it's fine there. Okay, that, that seemed to be all right at that point. So since one needs to compile the highlights of the way Shalom breaks this screen every stream. <laughs> there would be some interesting, interesting versions of it. Okay, it seems to be fine after the first run, but for some, for some reason the first run does weird things. So, yeah, look, it goes really weird on this this particular screen. I have no idea why, and then then fixes itself. But it's everything comes in right, then it breaks. So what is changing? Uh, let's have a look. So we've got uh, update page, destroy page. Could possibly be that, but I don't think so. Let's have a look what happens on the next page. Update, check joystick, animate, blah, blah, shift scroller. Yes, next page. Um, all right, maybe it is that. Let's do it like this. See if that helps. Shorts the code anyway, that's for sure. Uh, no, it does not help. I don't know why that changes that down there. That's really weird. So if I did this and I did this twice, I'm just trying to work out what's causing that um, that sprite glitch. Yeah, see that it's, it's completely different every time I do it. Then the second page will be fine. Oh no! All right, no, that's not that's not good. All right, 
oh, because now it's trying to call an update that doesn't exist. Okay. Okay, let's let's undo that. That's probably not a good idea then. That one's fine. You have an iron rod that is three yards, seven feet, six and five eight inches long. How many meters of iron rod do you have? Um I mean, I've got so many problems with that anyway. Um, like, how do you measure something and call it three yards and seven feet? So that on its own annoys me. Um, and the correct answer to that is, um, I don't know. The correct answer to that is go away and learn the metric system. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm losing losing track of what I'm doing there. All right, we'll work out that sprite thing in a minute. Let's just get the um, let's see what happens if I try and update the sprites at this point. So basically, what I want to try and do is I want to try and change the sprite uh, on this page. Um, in this update, so so here basically. So if I take, if I just do that, what happens? Does it put the sprite pointer back? I have a feeling it probably won't, but let's just try it anyway. No, see, it it, it screws it up up here. So there would have to be another check at the end to put it back as well in order to make this work. So what I'm going to do is have a, a restore logo sprites here. And what this will do, this will wait for the end of the page. And then it will restore those sprites. So I am going to change this update to happen like so. There's our update page. I am going to do a jump to subroutine here. jump there instead <clears throat> this wine is really nice it's just very hard to drink oh it's Bordeaux yeah it says Bordeaux on the top well it has to be it's from Bordeaux right it has to be Can we have a quiz about six five oh two? Hard to drink evil good, good code. You you mean like tequila? Okay, so logo sprites. Okay, so logo sprites are here. And this sets the pointers. Apply logo sprite data. Um Actually, this could work. I might just need to do that, set up logo sprites. Let's just see if that works. If that works, then I'll change this method uh, to point directly to that. I think it probably will work. Update page, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, let's just do that there and then change this. Okay, so hopefully now we won't see any difference to the logo at the top, but we can still update the sprite 
in the middle. No, okay, so something's gone wrong here. And this is probably again to do with the, the timing of these things at the bottom um, because it's not actually advancing the next bit. This is, I mean, we're, we're kind of doing slightly dodgy things with the way this is this is being handled, but it's all about getting the timing right. Once the timing works, I'm just going to step away from it. I really don't care too much if it's if it's the best way of doing it or not. Let's advance that a little bit more. Ah, you see, you see, it needs to be off screen because it's changing them here, which is not good. The idea is kind of right, um, but we're doing it at the wrong place. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, we're going to wait for D011. uh to be negative if it's still positive we jump back to here and then we check this line down here and we can check this for actually that's probably enough because then this yeah that's probably enough actually so let's just do that yeah there we go right so now I can set sprites in the middle to whatever I want, and they will be adjust. Ah, there's a bit of a flicker going on up here, though. I'm not sure what that's about. See that K? It's flickering quite heavily, which is what's causing that to flicker. Let's have a look at that in. Reminds me, actually, I do need to update the um, the SID player at some point. Okay, it should be triggering. It should be triggering a lot quicker than that, and it's not doing. So let's just have a quick look at when this update page. No, uh, so logo sprites. There is a logo sprite update. Update logo sprites, update page. Okay, so if I move that to there like that, maybe that will. Just trying to get the timing right. Once I get the timing right on this, then everything will be good. That looks to be better. And see it's not flickering now okay cool so now next step is let's try it and add a sprite in the middle of this screen so let's bring up the player sprites so let's just do it with through looking at the player So, where's the player sprite? So we not have the player sprite? Oh, is it in? For some reason, I think it's in here. Yeah, there we go. Player throw. Oh, we need to do the crown offsets as well. That's going to have to happen. All right, let's do uh, 72. That should be fine. All right. Thanks for the follow, Judge Fred. Judge Fred, <laughs> welcome to the stream. Yeah, that's been a, considering how many Christmas tunes we normally have. There's been a very disappointing lack of them. Um, considering we are actually in Christmas, or on our way to Christmas, I should say. Okay, so if I put the uh, sprite sixty two, put it into here. And then set the position of this. So let's. Um, I mean, this is just a temporary thing right now, but let's let's go with this for now. So let's just set somewhere in the middle. Store that here. Actually, let's store it in both of them. There we go. And set a color to red. Okay, so hopefully, 
we should have something resembling a player in the middle of the screen at this point now. Okay, so it's not multicolor. It needs moving up slightly. So let's start by moving it up a little bit. Uh, so X seems to be all right. Let's just move this back a little bit. Let's move it up. Uh, let's move it up like that. And let's turn multicolor on for that sprite as well. Um, let's do it with this and then. Oh, I think it's D01C. Okay, well, let me remember these ones. Is it D01A? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. oh, these are on seed, that's right, okay. Okay, so it needs moving down two or so. And the colors need fixing. So this is where restoring the sprites is going to be important. So um, let's have a look at doing this in two different ways. So obviously we've got an in-game sprite color, and we've got a we've got a logo sprite color as well. So first of all, in the restore sprites, let's have a look at that. Uh, uh, Rainbow Islands. God, this music. This music haunts me to this day. Okay, yeah, see the the logo sprites don't have any color setup in here. Multicolor setup that is. So let's have a look. Uh not that one. Where is it? What's the what's the multi D02 five and six? Okay. Two five. That is gonna be in the IRQ, isn't it? I'm fairly certain of that. Uh not that one. In this one yeah okay so they're being set in the IRQ here uh, in sprite line zero so if I change them they will automatically change back so that's good so now to find out what to change them to let's bring up player again in here Okay, let's just search for it. Uh, I'm pretty sure seven is not the right multicolor for this. Of course, this is this is another reason I'm not a big fan of using these values because then I have to make sure I use them everywhere. Uh, so pink and is that orange or something pink and brown or something okay so actually we can do this in here so it's done for every single frame uh so for every every single update um in the middle of the screen. More Christmas tunes. I like the Christmas tunes. There we go. So now we've got a player in the middle of the screen. Let me just check that that is the right color of his hair. It is indeed. So now what we can do is we can kind of animate through the throw-in animation just to show that happening. Um, we already have the throw animation in this table here. Um, so I'm just going to move through this table. I'm going to use this value here. And I'm just going to move through this table. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have... Um, Where is it? There it is. So, okay, so this is this is setting up some some very basic stuff here. Um, 
So that's what we're doing here. We're grabbing this. Um, and the value we need to grab is going to be based on some index. So I'm going to put that in X. Uh, and then I'm going to create some update vars here. Um, and the first one in here is going to be uh, because this will be shared between different screens. So uh, player and in index. So I'm just going to kind of repeat this in case. Yeah, that, that indicates that we can use either label for this. OK, so in this case, what we need to do is we need to update um, I feel like there needs to be another simple function here to make this reusable. I'm trying to save space as much as possible here. Uh, good night, Mike. I missed that. Good night, dude. Um, okay, so. What's it called? So it'd be count here. So I feel like this this little bit of code I'm writing now should probably be uh, some something. Uh, hang on, we'll do it like this. We'll do. Yeah, this is what we'll do. We'll do update. update ink file and the, the reason I'm doing it as a routine like this is so I can use it uh, as often as I want uh, without it taking up too much space so here it would be something like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in an index here so this is our index into this array here Pass it in as Y, and I'm gonna do it like this. There we go. So, yeah, this will work. Okay. Now, can I compare? Oh God. Okay. I'm just trying to work out if this will work. Compare X. Ah, shit, can't do it that way. But I can do compare. Come on, okay. Okay. Can I do ink, comma, Y? I can't, it has to be comma X. So, okay, that becomes X, this becomes Y. Uh, hang on, I'm not looking who's doing that. Uh, uh, can't see the text. Uh, last quiz said Rose Blasters. You said it is Road Blaster. What? Oh, it's uh, okay. It's just an error in the quiz. Okay, that's fine. We can fix these things. Uh, yeah, okay, because the image said roadblaster.png, so roadblasters, there we go. Fixed. Uh, oh, should probably keep that, that open. There you go. Yeah, it happens. happens. It's um, it's because it's automated from the, the image names. If they've put no S on the image names, then... T 
<laughs> okay, so we're going to increment the value here. And then we're going to transfer Y to the accumulator. And then we're going to compare the accumulator to this value here. And then if that is equal, sorry, if it's not equal, we jump to here. Otherwise, Okay, cool. So that looks kind of overcomplicated, but what this is doing is is allowing us to uh, increment a value from zero to an end target, um, and that could be any of these values in here, uh, which means we can animate different things uh, just by doing this rather than repeating this for everything that we want to animate. Um, and then I can. Uh, let's grab yeah so the accumulator will always be like that there we go Okay, so hopefully now the, the player will be doing a throw animation. Uh, let me turn tables to this. Bit of a, is this Flimbo's quest, I think? Yeah. One of the, um, in my opinion, one of the Sid artists who's very overlooked when people mention lists of of the best sid artists i think this guy's brilliant okay cool so we've got a little animated guy there so really we should have um a little thing being thrown it doesn't have to be exactly right but um it'd be good if it at least did something um um just trying to think of the best way to do this because the problem is is the the sprite that we the, the the character that we use to do the animation is actually built at runtime so it's not fully available at that point but we do have in the character set a non-shifted version of it so i can probably cheat how this looks it's not going to look exactly right but it will look close enough for it to be oh actually shit we don't it's not there at all, is it? Okay, so in that case, I need to add it in. I need to add something in here. Oh, no, there we go. It's there. There it is. So 180. So we need to add the char 180 to a location. So I'm going to use this value here to store some other values. So what I'm going to do is... Um, draw a projectile so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to clear um a couple of characters at space so i'm just going to set that to zero oops and i'm going to set that to can i do that is it zero zero or do i need two zero um I think I need that one, don't I? DB. I don't trust that one there. So I'm gonna put DB in. I think that's probably right. 
So first of all, let me put DC in and then I can see where it's actually printing. Um, and let's move that down. So that's going to be on. So it needs to be between this bit and this bit, uh, not this bit, sorry. This bit and this bit. So this is seven. So it's kind of this line here, seven, eight, nine. So on the ninth line, uh, let's try there. And let's do this backwards. Right, let's just see how that where that's drawn. And this is where we're going to draw our projectile. Okay, so it's drawing it kind of in the middle here. So let's move it a little bit across. It's also going to need some color behind it as well. So let's just do a very simple color ramp. Again, this is going to be different. Uh, but that should be enough to get it working. Let's move this over another four or so. Let's do uh, let's six. There we go. So what I'm trying to do now is be as efficient as I can with, with space. Um, while still creating something that allows it to look a little bit like we're throwing things. It doesn't have to be spot on, but if it can look if it can look similar, that's that's good enough. Uh, I'm gonna move it back to though I think I was right with four, not six. So you see those five so I'm gonna I'm gonna make it animate through those five slots uh at the right time. So I'm going to set that to DB now. This is actually going to color in the, the locations. So that can remain. Uh, this needs to be uh, zero A so that it's a red color. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some comparisons. So first thing I need to do is I need to check this value. Um, because if X is less than a certain value, then we don't need to animate. So the animation goes through this animation here and then it throws at this point here. So I think three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So let's go, if it's less than, if it's less than eight, because eight is a nice, right? If it's eight or less, Uh, I don't know. Hang on. Let me think about this. Okay, let's let's compare it to seven. Uh, well, let's compare it to eight. There we go. So it's less than eight. We jump ahead to here. However, if it is more than eight, then it can be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it could be eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen which is actually six locations. So let's do nine, there we go. In which case, we'll subtract nine from it. Carry is already set at this point, so we can just do that. And then we'll transfer that back. And then we're gonna load, is it BD, I think? B4, okay, load B4. Install that at there we go. So hopefully now this should do a kind of throw animation. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Okay, it's a little bit delayed. It needs to be a bit sooner. Also, the multicolors are not right at this point, so we need to set the multicolors right. Okay, so so let's do this at five. But we're also going to have to check if it goes over as well, so. OK, 
Okay, it's a little bit too too late still. Uh, it's not too off that. This just needs more blocking off it though. So there we go. And we are going to need to set the multicolors up here as well. So uh, multicolors for the game are. Uh, black and then this one can be anything uh, it doesn't matter about the other one this is the only one that matters so that was the wrong color damn it So yes, it's not moving up and down like you would expect it to, but this is enough to kind of show what you need to do, I think. And then what we'll do is we'll have, oh no, see how it's broken that up there now. Okay, let's just check that again. Yeah, okay, so it breaks that up there when I change that. So what I need to do is in here, Okay, that's good enough for that. So what I need to do now is put um, another sprite on the other side. Uh, and this needs to be animated in, an, in another way. So it's kind of growing in size this, but this is probably the most complicated of the, of the things here. Um, and we're still, yeah, there's still plenty of room left. B, C, D. Yeah, we're still still like eight hundred bytes left. So, um, I'm going to carry on till about half two, um, I think, and then, and then I'm just going to stop. I think uh, I'm not going to do much more at that point um, oh, sorry just checking something in here uh Okay, yeah, I need to check that out later. Sorry, just catching up with some Mega 65 stuff there. Put on the Monty Python cheese sketch, we need a break. No, I, I need to I need to get through this. This is this is kind of the last little bits now, the last remnants of this uh, uh of this kind of section. So I think there'll be another thing here, which is uh, uh, page stage index. So when you, there'll, there'll be a couple of different kind of stages to this. So I'm going to put that in there. I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute, but I think we'll need that. Um, so this is setting up, uh, this is player sprite. And now I'm going to create an enemy sprite here. Uh, I'm going to keep this bit separate. Uh, global values. Because uh, these are values that we're going to set differently for, uh, for the same for everything. Uh, they're either they're either global color values or global kind of multicolor setup values. Uh, so enemy sprite. So what am I going to do here? Uh, I am going to grab, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, good luck getting this one, right? <laughs> I want to see who can, who can name this game as accurately as possible. Uh, 
Yeah. And I, and I shall once it comes up, I will. Oh, super off road is is all you need to do. However, you can also use. Oh, it's just super off road. I need to add more into that. So. Uh... Oh, I need to have a think about that one. Because there's Ivan Iron Man Stewart's super off road racer. Um, yeah, there should be a couple in there. I'm going to put super off road racer. Nobody, nobody got it anyway. Nobody came close enough. Um, Ivan Iron Man off road racer was the closest from Andy, but. Even that is kind of, it still needs the super in there. Uh, it's Ivan Iron Man Stewart. And it's Stewart's as well. Off Super Off Road Racer. I mean, that's, I mean, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tricky one. Super off road racer, I think, is probably the one you'd you'd probably Oh, there is no racer. Is it just super off road? Oh really? Am I am I am I imagining that? Iron Iron Man Stewart's super off road. Uh, oh yeah, super off road, cool. Yeah, let's say let's get rid of that one. So Ivan Iron Man Stewart's super off road. Yeah, so that would that should be enough, uh, and it's a space there as well. Not that that space matters. Um. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's a tricky one. It is a tricky one. Okay, let's open up the enemies. So let's just put Jelly Bean walking this way. Uh, so we'll go with these three frames here. Um, three, two. Okay, so let's have a look at Jelly Bean in here. So these three here, 13, 14, 15, okay. So we'll keep those pretty similar, but we'll shift him over a little bit. So we'll move him over to maybe there or there, actually. Not there. That's probably enough. Uh, Colour can remain red. That's fine. Uh, but then here, what we'll do is we'll animate the enemy as well. So. Christmas, 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 Christmas. And see now we can we can utilize this properly. And so this is on a separate one here. So uh So that's our enemy animation index. So we have to change that value here to one. So we advance it here. Uh, and then we can grab that value and store that in one. Okay, hopefully that should make that guy walk, but who knows? Okay, so it's moved the wrong thing over and that's simply because I've not advanced the values, that's why. So here it should be two, three, like so. There we go.
Okay, it's not showing the right sprite pointers at all there for some reason. Ah, now is that because those sprites aren't loaded in yet? Is that what's going on there? Are those sprites not loaded in? We might need to pick a different... I think that is what's happening, actually. Because we do some clever stuff to kind of free up room for various things. So I think we might need to might need to double check those sprites at that location. Um, in fact, there are no sprites at that location at this point. So let me just pause, turn IO RAM on. Okay, so that's player RAM. So we what we were on two one oh no one zero. That's down here. Okay. Uh Okay, so let's turn that back to 35. Restore the game. Uh, so 1, 0, that is uh, C400. Yeah, see, look, no, no sprites here at all. Because this is screen RAM at this point. So we'd have to pick something in this area here. Uh, so let's go with the um, what looks like the cola bottle. So let's pick the cola bottle instead. So that's this one uh, from here. Okay, that's fine. We just need to find where the cola bottle is. Uh, enemy three. It's because we reuse some of the space. There's a bit of memory copying around. Okay, cool. Right, so what we can do now is we can have different stages in here. And we can animate things a little bit differently then. So first of all, I'm actually I'm gonna center those things there. They could do with being centered a little bit. So let's move this over uh, a little bit. So we've got player at this position here. Uh and this player here. So let's move this over 30 like that. Uh, which puts that there, which means we now have to move this over by six. Okay, let's try that. Should be a little bit more centered, I think. Then can we have a Christmas? Oh my god, yeah, Christmas Sids only. Actually, no, it needs moving back. It's too far, isn't it? All right. I do feel quite Christmassy all of a sudden. I wonder why. Okay, cool. Um, there's a little bit of flickering on the top of the sprite, but I'm not too fussed about that. Yeah, you see, there's a little bit going on here. Okay, next job is to just slow down that page transition a little bit because it's just a little bit too quick. Um, Where is the next page update? It's got to be in here somewhere. Where is the page update? Oh, that's logo sprites. That's why it's page I'm looking for. Here we go. Okay, update page. Okay, it doesn't seem to have anything directly in it so it must be in here decrease page time I'm not equal to here okay so yeah we just need to add a timer thing into here as well I'm 
should be enough. Right, that should double the amount of time we're on that screen. So this is this is kind of all right. Um, we just need to make that guy stun now. So this is going to advance through stages. So in our page setup. I realize this is taking many, many streams to do this, but this is all in aid of making the, the title screen seem kind of nice. Um, without this, we'd end up with something far too simple. I want, I want the title screen to feel like it gives you enough information. Okay, so we're going to reset these vars in here. One of these vars is the stage. Um, and what's going to happen there is whenever you whenever something something will happen which will advance the page stage um for now we're going to keep all the sprite stuff the same uh, and we'll do the page thing here so we're going to load page stage index uh if it is equal we go to stage one it's going to be here. Otherwise, we're going to jump to stage two. And stage complete. So stage two is going to be the enemy being stunned um, and then doing other things as well. So the way this is going to work um, is when we get to the end here, at this point here, so we'll do a, another comparison here. Uh, we're comparing this value to be that, basically. If it gets to that, then we increment uh, update, uh, sorry, page stage index and jump to stage complete. And then just to check that that's working, stage two, I'm just going to increment the border. OK, it's not advancing. The reason it's not advancing is because that's too much that needs to be one less that should probably happen no that's fine let's do that Okay, cool. So it gets to that point, and then obviously the the behavior changes. Uh, I don't know why it's showing those two. It really should be showing those two. Oh, I guess because it's not setting the setting the sprite things anymore. Okay, so in stage two, basically we need to set those sprite pointers. So first of all, we'll set this to be. be that and we set that to be that and then we need to set the color of the enemy to be gray and then we just have a countdown there basically at that point so uh get rid of that so what I'm going to have here, oops, what I'm going to have here is stage three. 
uh, there's going to be a little carrot down here. And uh, what we're going to do is in this position here, we're going to load um, our countdown values. So this is our And we can store that at, doesn't really matter where we store this. So we're going to use the first index here. Because we don't need the player animation index at this point. So we're just going to use the cat this one. This is what I mean about reusing these values. There, and then we decrease. countdown index and if that's not equal to zero we jump to well here actually otherwise we will um well, it's still going to need a jump anyway so let's do it this way So I'm in a bit of a zone tonight with this. Um, so at this point, we increment um, our, uh, what was it, page, stage, index, there we go. So on this point here, we need to do some comparisons. So that's already in the accumulator. So we just need to compare to zero one. Uh, there we go. Cool. So we should get it stun the enemy and there'll be a small pause and then um, the border will flash. So that happened too late, border flash. Okay, but let's just look at that again. Okay, there was too much of a pause there before it stopped. So let's let's change the point at which that happens. Um, so that's this check here. Uh, which one in particular is it? This one here. Okay, so it's just reduce that a little bit. We might be able to move that down into the other area instead. Okay, that's kind of all right. Okay, what I'm going to do though is instead of doing this check here now, uh, not that one, sorry, this one, I'm going to do it here. Try and put that there instead. Cool. Enemy stuns. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that update character to the next location. I apologize if this is boring as hell. I can imagine that it would be. Uh, but yeah, you get what you're given. And so now what we're going to use, we're going to use the player walk animation and we're going to do the countdown the other way around. Um, so I'm going to actually start the countdown at zero. Uh, and then here, uh, I'm actually going to increment the countdown. And I'm going to compare that to 30. If it reaches that, it's going to jump to here. Otherwise, what it's going to do is it's going to grab, um, it's going to add our player position, which is this one here. 
uh, A0. So the player should move towards the, the enemy now. And I'm also going to do this as well. What player is the enemy? It's a very specific piece of code, but I think this should look pretty good, so. Sprite pointers plus zero. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ugh. All stiff and achy. Oh, my God. This is like a crazy fast. Fast rock version. Uh, I'm also going to store that at player adding index. All right, hopefully, hopefully this is going to work now. Okay, no, something not went horribly wrong there. So let's have a look at what it should be doing. Uh... All right, okay. Uh... If it's not 30... Do that there instead. So if it is equal, we jump to there. No. No, that was it was right the first time. Just needs that though. Okay, almost there. It's just going too far now. Um, why is it going too far? This should be the limit that it's reaching. Player walk right, player walk right. Yes, so it shouldn't be going past those values. Okay, let's do it again. See what's going on there. It's like it's taken the sprite points too far at that point. Yeah, it shouldn't be doing that. Okay. So it gets to this point and it does. Okay, it's storing the throw animation. Okay, that's fine because it should get overwritten by this. So let's just get rid of that. Don't need that. Sprite pointer, fine. This seems wrong for some reason. Like if I just put load x with zero in there, is that is that just gonna? Hopefully, this will just slide over. But uh, good night, SP. Thanks for joining. Oh, I missed that. Okay, uh, this is kind of right. And what I'm going to do in here, let me just remove that. I'm just going to copy those values here and put them in here. Uh, thank you for the follow, Rack and Jack. I like the name. 
any the way it's spelt. So I'm just forcing some values into here for a second. Uh, and that means that this would be uh, a zero plus 30. So B, C, D is D zero. So that's kind of what I want. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make him open his mouth, absorb that, and then there'll be a fourth um, stage where he does the, the pulsing sort of thing. Uh, and so far, that's not bad in terms of memory. Yeah, we, we've really, we've not even approached the, the oh, actually, yeah, it's, it's kind of starting to eat memory a little bit, but it's not, it's not bad. We've still got um, 512. We've still got 700. We've only used about 100 bytes or so. That's not bad at all. And there's still things I can move around, I'm pretty sure. Like there's, um, where was the bit I was looking at? This is projectiles bit as well, which is about half a kilobyte, which could be moved somewhere else. So there's a few things we can still shuffle around. And I think there's some room in the, in the sprite space as well. Not in the enemies, but there's definitely room in the uh, in the player sprite file to, to insert some things in here and there. Oh, God. Okay, um, so we've got player walking to the enemy, uh, but not animating properly for some reason. Um, play walk right, play walk right. Okay, so this should be animating up to Y. Increment that value, yes. Compare it to the value that was in Y. Okay. Okay, that should be... I don't know why, it. I don't know why, but for some reason it, it doesn't keep that value. It goes beyond that, that value. I don't know what it thinks is in here at this point. In fact, let's put a breakpoint in here. Let's see what values it's getting through. Okay, so it's it's going to do this for every single freaking frame now, which is annoying. Notice that that has changed to an eye. That should be updated um, before that. But that's fine. So I can see... Uh, okay, one, two, three, and then it should go back to zero. But it's not. It's hitting four, which means we turn into that. So there is something wrong with this routine. Um, why is FC? Why is why FC? Oh, because I've got this the wrong way around. That's why. There we go. That's the problem. Okay, so the other problem is um, when we get into, when we change stage, we should probably jump directly to that stage instead of uh, where is it? Incorrect. Yeah. So instead of doing this, we should probably just go straight into that uh, page index here. So the way to do that is just to load page stage index here. That should jump straight in. Uh, I'm going to put the breakpoint back in. The reason I'm going to put the breakpoint back in is so I can see uh, if that sprite changes incorrectly at any point. Is that not loaded? There we go. Okay. Yep, so the color bottle didn't change incorrectly. We're properly animated there. Okay, cool. Right, let's get rid of the breakpoint and see what that looks like when it runs properly. Okay, I'm going to reduce the amount it walks down a little bit. So at the moment it's walking up to 30. Let's make that uh, 20. Uh, 
and let's make sure that the next line flicks to that correctly. Uh, so that becomes C0. We need to do the same thing here as well. So here we're doing this jump to stage complete, but really what we should be doing is loading this and jump to stage three to stop any sprite flickering. Um, and then in stage three, we do this bit on the next value here. You can see slowly we're building up um, a pre-canned kind of set of animations, uh, quite basic animations, but we're managing to do it in a relatively small amount of code without having to re-implement other things. Okay, so this is cool. So now we need the cola bottle to stay gray. So we have to implement that. Uh, so cola bottle gray was this bit here. So that definitely has to happen here. Um, there are some other values that are going to need to set in here as well. So uh, we are going to need to reset uh, player and enemy anim index. And the reason we need to reset those is because we're going to use those now to animate um, the player eating. Uh, so we'll do player eat, right? So let's do this one first. So that's colors set. Let's go ahead and do the player eating. So, so it's basically copying this code here. Uh, now, this is a little bit different, uh, so I'm not going to use this method. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get player and an index. I'm going to manually do this. Oh, actually, I wonder if we can set another parameter. No, it's fine. Okay, whoops. Well, we'll just do this manually. Okay, so, so P. <laughs> So P counter. Not very Christmassy, but I'll accept it. Otherwise, what we're going to do here is we're going to, first of all, we're going to check this value uh, via an index. Otherwise, we're going to implement it and store it there. We'll do that here. And then the X is always set. There we go. So then at this point, we can just load Yeah, okay, so now we have Okay, we do need to set that as well. So this is sprite kind of constants at this point. Whew, okay. Oh, I missed that completely. I didn't see what it did, if it did anything at all. Okay, cool. Uh, so. So at this point, we only need to start animating the enemy um, if the player index is at two. So first of all, what we do is we, uh, okay, that's the player setup. So here we now, we compare X to two. If it's not equal, no enemy anim yet. Oh, actually we'll do, we'll do it this way. Uh, 
otherwise what we do is we set the player the enemy to the normal position otherwise we do enemy animation okay now enemy animation this is going to be tricky because i don't think we do have this stored anywhere um shit no we don't have this stored anywhere or do we hang on do we do we did we did we put it into no okay Okay, we might need to be sneaky and put something into here. It's going to be tricky. Absorb animation. So we need four sprite frames here. Um, please tell me these are put somewhere. EEC zero, they are there. Awesome. Oh no, they're not. Let's go have a look in memory. Ah, fudge. All right. Um, okay, next next thing. Okay, so it's going to have to be a little bit of trickery here, I think. Oh, man, we get there in the end. I'm going to take another break in about 10 minutes, last one of the night. Uh, thanks for sticking with me, guys, as well. I realize it's not the most interesting sort of thing in the world, but I think it's it's starting to take shape. It's looking nice, so it's worth it. It's all worth it. Okay, we do have absorb anim dot bin. So let's just see if I can find where that's um, absorb anim dot bin. Hopefully that's stored somewhere. Oh, seven e hundred. Ah, okay. I think this is copied into the right location, so we might be able to get away with this. Not what I wanted to press there, but okay. Uh, yes, okay. So we do have an animation here. And I wonder, is that even required at this point? Um, we might have just freed up a little bit more memory. So let's just see where that's actually copied from. Because uh, I might be able to get away with not copying that at all uh let's see let's see how it's used first of all let's have a look so what i'm looking for now is when the game enters so here's where we enter the game okay i'm not seeing where it might be copied let's have a look let's let's actually start the game in here see where that's copied so this will be copied somewhere else so here's the kind of area um where you would expect those animations to be but i'm not seeing anything okay that's character sets Okay, let's check the behaviors because that's not giving me a lot. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I like in these Christmassy tunes. Just about getting through this wine tonight. Uh, behaviors, here we go. So there is somewhere absorb behavior, here we go.
seven E. So that would imply uh enemy E pointer. So accumulate enemy E pointer MSB seven E. So that would be towards the end of that space. <laughs> <laughs> to the project i know tell me about it thank you great defender um appreciated yeah this has been one hell of a long project you think about it, this is this is coming up to like one and a half years old now this project um but i i think it's starting to starting to take shape nicely now okay so i've been saying i've been saying that for so many streams though <laughs> but it is every every stream we get a little bit we get a little bit closer to to the goal um not that one sorry I want that one cool i'm i'm glad that's that's always been the aim of this to to give people something they can take away from the stream and and feel like they've they've gained something um and that that's always been the always been the aim from the very beginning so i have no idea where it's grabbing these animations from it kind of points to up here but i'm not sure how it's actually getting that data is it copying it from somewhere because i'm not entirely sure it's This is the problem when you when you do something that takes so long. I don't remember where any of this code actually is anymore. Um, something is moot. So our absorb sprites are currently uh, in this kind of location. Uh, let me jump to it. They're here. Uh, which is outside of the Vic Bank. So they're obviously copied in at some point. Um, I'm just not entirely sure when they're copied in. Um, but they're definitely copied in at some point. So this is what they look like. Uh, you can see if I advance down to here. There you go. So these are the these are the four sprites I need. Quite hard to tell in this. But at some point they get copied into this kind of area here somewhere and i'm not entirely sure where or how because that isn't i don't know what that is but that's not that's something else completely yeah i mean that looks like an enemy of some kind so i'm not sure Maybe it's copied on the fly. Maybe it is literally copied on the fly. Uh, let's let's try. Let's uh, let's just turn everything back on. Whoops, thirty-five. Let's advance it. Let's just get an absorb going so we can see what's going on. Okay. Okay. So pause again. See, I'm not seeing anything in here. Uh, let me set the IO area off. Yeah, see, look, none of it looks. Damn. <laughs> I like that question. That's one of the most fundamental problems with the temperature system is that we temperature is not how cold or hot something it's 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 um it's the lack of heat in something so something that has zero heat is at absolute zero but absolute zero is not zero zero degree c or zero degree fahrenheit it's zero degree kelvin so immediately that that causes problems with our temperature system And then it's, yeah, it's, it's weird. Temperature is a weird thing. Yeah. There's no such thing as, as twice as cold or twice as hot. That's not, it's not something you can, you can say this has twice as much heat as, as this. 
uh, but even that doesn't work in the in the Kelvin scale properly. Um, yeah, it's it's a strange one. It's because the Kelvin scale was adjusted so that it um, matched uh, Celsius. So there's still some discrepancies in there. The way that 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 works still, because we've we've still aligned it with. Uh, Celsius. Just go by. Well, if you can go zero Kelvin, you'll win the Nobel Physics Prize. Zero zero Kelvin is is hasn't been achieved. You can get close to it, but you've nobody's actually achieved zero Kelvin yet. And it makes sense if you think about it. So if you've got something, how do you how do you make something colder? You make it colder by um, taking heat away from it. And the way you take heat away from it is you have something colder than it. So if you've got something that's 20 degrees Celsius and something that's zero degrees Celsius, and you put the zero degrees next to the 20, then the 20 will get cooler. So you have, you have, you're taking heat away from one thing. So to get to zero degrees Kelvin, you need something cooler than zero degrees Kelvin to cool something down to zero degrees Kelvin. So you can't do it. It's impossible. Or as far as we know, it's impossible. Um hope that made sense. Um okay, uh I forgot where I was at. I was getting in, I was enjoying the uh, physics talk. <laughs> um do, do, do. oh yeah, trying to figure out where the the yeah, where is that coming from? Where is it coming from? Okay, I guess the first thing to do is to actually get the uh, the absorb animation and freeze as soon as we get the absorb animation. Can we see? We can see where it is in memory, and then we can see when it's written to. So let's go here. Okay, not at that point, but now maybe. Um, was I too late? I think I was too late then. Oh no, there we go. You can see it in this slot here. So we've put that there. So it's in this slot and it's pointer is BF. So BF is, uh, oh, it is just at the end of D zero space. So let's go and have a look. Oh, it's being copied in. That's what it's being, it's being copied in on the fly. Okay, that's fine. Um, why does it not let me change that? Okay, that mean it means it's being copied on the fly. So, okay, so let's go and have a look. See if we can find DF eighty. No, okay. Let's have a look for DFC zero. No, okay. Okay, this is fine. It just means what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to take these four frames here. I'm going to take our enemies file here. Not our enemies, sorry. Oh, yeah, of course, they're copied into these two, aren't they? That's what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to take this player file here. Uh, I'm just going to add four more frames to it. I'm going to paste them in there, and then I'm going to put these in place uh, just around some uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I've got space. Okay, so I'm going to put one here. Oops. Uh, and this needs to be flipped as well. So flip, flip, flip. Flip. There we go. Save. Okay, so this is 30 and 31. I need to write these down. See, I told you I'd find a way around these. 30, 31, 54, 55. Okay, so now we've got a new animation that we can use just for those uh, it means there's no other space in here for anything well one extra space but to be honest we don't need anything else so it's fine we, we're making good use of the space let's 
Okay, so in that case, in tables, we'll add a new one. Uh, we'll call this intro absorb. And our player starts at 64, so we need to add these values to it. So that becomes 94, 95, uh, 118, 119. And there we go. We've got a new animation. So then in here, this bit here. We can then do, well, basically the same thing again here. Um, but now we get enemy. And if it reaches three, we stop. Yep. Cool. Right. Okay. Okay, it, it's trying, but it's failing because it's flickering between two things here for some reason. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what I've done. So it gets to stage three correctly. Uh, it sets these sprites up, checks the animation counter, sets the player eat index. Just turn those off for a second. Okay, get the enemy index. So it's fine until it gets to this point, then it breaks. Ah, because that should be enemy index. There we go. And then we can also actually, if we do it this way, so if we transfer X to the accumulator, shift it to the right twice to the left twice sorry to double it this is confusing me with the left and right left right left right and then add uh, or is it this one here e0 no sorry it's subtract Do it here, I guess. No. And this is going to be the advance to the next stage, so.
Okay, cool. Let's try that out. So I'm not loading because I've done a branch to stage four. Completely missed that. Okay, something went horribly wrong there. So let's just take a quick look at that. I think it's to do with the to do with this bit here. So let's just turn that off for a second. Yeah, let's just try that. Okay, almost there. It just needs to move backwards a bit. Uh, so interabsorb should be zero, one, two, or three. Okay, oh, yeah, I don't know why this doesn't work then. Let's try that. Or is it because I'm doing something? I oh, don't know, it should be fine. <clears throat> Why does it go off screen there? That's really weird. Let's X into the accumulator. Huh. I'll just do that. What does it do? Um, all right, I'm going to try something. I don't know why that's not working, but I'm going to try something different. So I'm going to do that. Don't know why that would be any different, but let's try it out. Okay, kind of almost worked. What are we looking like code wise? Yeah, that's better. Uh oh yeah, we're doing pretty good still. Okay, cool. Um so then the final section here um is Basically, uh, okay, so the final section here is we need to set these sprites to the right position and, and visibility, um, which is player in this location enemy not showing at all so i'm going to set that to zero so now the enemy is not showing only the player is showing here um we've reset the player anim index we've reset the player stage index so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to load x with player with uh, enemy, use that one, 
enemy anim index. Jump to here. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to load accumulate with zero. We're going to store that at uh, page stage index. Uh, enemy anim index and player anim index and then we're going to jump all the way back to the beginning of this function for this one to set things up again um, so it should reset properly at this point otherwise it's going to flash the border until it's ready to go So it should repeat this sequence. Okay, it's not repeating the sequence because uh, we need to store it back in here again. Oops. Let's go to two thirds. So I think another half an hour. Yes, uh, I do need to take a quick break though. Um, so quiz will be on again in a second. I just want to get this this one right. So this is looking pretty good. I just need to sort the the final animation out. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break. Two minutes, guys. Be as quick as I can. Uh, be right back. Right, I'm back. <sighs> I told you I'd be quick. So the final thing I want to do here is at the very beginning of this whole thing, um, we have another value, two values we need to set in here, um, which is the sprite expand, uh, which is going to be D01D, uh, D017, is it? Yeah, D zero zero one seven D zero one D. Um. Uh. Now this, I need to see what happens when I do this because this may break the, the borders down the side. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so I need to make sure it's not set to zero in that case. Uh, instead, what I need to do is... Yeah, so this 
that's uh, that's actually uh, left me like that. I think that's. I think it's just that one I need. Uh, thanks for the follow, Gladius. Uh, appreciated. Okay, so there is a double height one as well. Okay, that's fine. Of course, there is. Just to annoy me. Okay, I think that animation is pretty concise. It shows that you throw something and then you have to get a bit closer. So it kind of conveys a few points as well. Uh, oh, Steps is a nightmare. Steps is a nightmare. Those 2,000 will be gone very soon. <laughs> He's a gambling addict. Mind you, I'm the same. Whenever I go on Chase's stream, Steps always gives me points and I immediately gamble all. Ooh. It's time to get chilly in here. So your temperature control in here is just ridiculous. Um. <laughs> Okay, so now these values I want to change. And the way I'm going to do this is based on this value in here, which is in currently in the X register. So actually, I'm going to do it like this. Actually, yeah, do it like that. Do I have a plus? I don't think I do have a plus, do I? Oh, I do. Okay. But only up to 129, but that's fine. Um, so what am I interested in here? So if... So what I'm going to do is if bit... Shit, this is difficult. Actually, let's do it like this. So I'm going to do it with that. Um, that's equal to zero, then do nothing. However, if it's not, then we're going to decide what we need to do at this point. So we're going to check based on this value here. Um, in which case, we're going to take D01D, which is our height thing, and we're going to or that with 01 and store that at D01. D01D, yes. And then uh, branch not equal to there, because that will not be set at that point. Uh, sorry, it will be non-zero at that point. Otherwise, we're going to do the same with D017. Which hopefully is going to alternate the the oh almost, but it's now showing the wrong sprite. Okay, so we we're, we're kind of almost there now, which means we need to get the player animation to be the right frame. No, not enemy. It's, it's this one I need here. But without the walking. Okay, so that has to be set here. And it needs to be not be eat. It needs to be. Um, let's just go with walk, walk right. That should be fine. 
then we also need to offset the player position as well. So the moment the player position is set here, um, but this needs to change. So if if the height is changing, which is this one, then we don't need to change the player X position, but we do need to play, change the player Y position. And um, we need to change it by uh, 21 so it, it, it extends upwards properly. Um, I hope all this is making sense, uh, and I hope it's not. Uh, I'm, I'm very concerned that it's quite a boring thing to to watch, but um, hey, you you guys choose to watch me, so it's your fault. <laughs> so seventy six, but minus twenty one, so this would be six to one like that. Uh, but then on the horizontal side of things this needs to change from C0 to something minus 12. So it's in the middle. So this would be B4 like that. I think that should do it. Let's have a look. Okay, no, not quite. Um, now, I think the problem here is the position of the sprites. Um, Because once it expands upwards, it, it's kind of going wrong. So let's let's just um, let's just play around a little bit here. First of all, let's let's get the animation looking right, even if it shifts incorrectly. So let's get rid of that line there. Okay, so there is something weird going on up here. Um, I'm not sure why, but there is definitely something weird going on there. We could just remove the the, the weight gain completely, um, which might actually be the right way to do this. Skip to that line. Don't need the border flesh. Let's get rid of that. And let's just do it all with this at the moment. It's still expanding on the what? Oh, hang on. I've got this the wrong way. I've got this the wrong way around, haven't I? All right, let's do let's do the horizontal shift here. Yeah, it wasn't totally intended, no. There was uh there was a little bit of planning to it, but um it was kind of a happy accident, really. I did want it to shift left and right, and I wasn't sure how it was gonna look. I thought it was actually going to move kind of like uh, kind of like a domino rally, like go to that direction and, and then go to this direction. Uh, but instead, it just kind of it does this nice kind of wishy washy uh, feel left and right. So, yeah. Yeah, each letter is on a sign. They're all on the same sine wave but they're all at different points on the sine wave. So so left and right is on a different point to the up and down, and they're staggered along, so they kind of compress like a spring. It's almost, it's kind of nice. So, <coughs> oh, dear. It's a nice effect, and one I, I shall do my best to try and remember um, in the future because it, it does look really good. So, okay, hopefully that's still going to do the same. Because there's only one more stage after this, which is to show the guy fat, and then um, we we can move on to the next uh, the next bit. Uh, I may I may have to update some of the position of the frames in here or something. I don't know. Uh, I, th I feel like this is going to break it though, so I'm just going to add ten to this first. 
don't really care if it's centered or not properly as long as it doesn't glitch is what my main concern is here which is it's glitching still that's the annoying thing so it gets to here and either does this if it's equal it goes to here otherwise it comes to here if it's equal it does this if it's not it does this Let's get rid of that. See, as soon as I do the expand down, it starts glitching up here. And is that because I need to... in here do this so one seven uh yeah i think that's it okay. i just need to make sure it's turned off for the logo as well okay yeah so that stops that glitch but now this doesn't feel quite right so i'm going to just change these a little bit to do this instead so hopefully that kind of sorts it's getting the timings right as well now the um the animation timings while trying to keep the code as small as possible okay so let's make that last a little bit longer because it's kind of right but it's just a bit a bit too short now so let's compare this to let's do 80 like that okay it's a bit too long now let's do there and now let's reduce that down as well so this time i'm going to put my mouse on the center of the sprite and i want the sprite to stay in the center as it expands which it does horizontally, but vertically it disappears now. The reason it's disappearing is because the sprite, the point at which the sprite needs to be drawn is too um, too soon. Uh, so either we need to accept that it's going to be down a little bit, which I'm going to, I'm just going to see how far I have to move it down before I can see it. Um, I have a funny feeling it's going to be a bit too far, so... Yeah, it's not. Okay, we can just do the horizontal expand. Let's get rid of the let's get rid of this one and just go for horizontal expand instead. Uh, in which case I'm gonna do this and change that back to eight and then change that down to four. But it should be enough to get the point across. and then make the guy fat when we're finished. So at the moment, the, the final move here is to actually end. So we need, a, we need another stage here. So the problem is here, we're, we're ending here, uh, whereas that should be the end from this position here. So what we should be doing here instead is ink page stage index, page stage index. Oops. Like so, and um, we just need to copy this from stage three. We're getting there in the end. I know it seems like we've done very little on this stream, but this is all this is all good stuff. Okay, so at this point, uh, this is exit. This is. Uh, we start here. Um, otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, increment. So that would give us about five seconds of the player being fat, which we're going to do by just 
basically taking these values again we need to do that and that whoops I was optimizing a menu screen to say four cycles. Yeah, I'm not. I'm more concerned about bytes here than I am cycles. Um, there's probably better ways to do what I'm doing here, but I'm conscious of this gap here between this and this. Uh, and at the moment, it's it's acceptable. At the moment, it's not bad at all. Um, and certainly would have been better than trying to force existing game routines to do what I needed them to do. Um, okay, so play a walk, right? Okay, this needs to be a very set value. It needs to be like this one here. Let's go for that. So 48 plus 64, so 112, which is a nice number. Where is it? There, which is that, so zero. Okay, hopefully that's going to give us a nice repeating, a repeating thing. Okay, too slow. Oh, also, not the right time to be doing that. Okay. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, because here we shouldn't be doing this. We should be jumping to Okay, I'm going to cheat something here. I'm going to load strike pointers plus zero. Should give us a slightly fatter guy. Hopefully this has worked. Okay, just need to pick the right frame. It's not quite the right frame for him. Let's just have a look again what, what frames we're looking at. So uh, maybe that's all right, actually. And then we want that to repeat fairly quickly. So rather than I'm going to just increment this twice every frame that should half the amount of time okay cool and it should repeat and then it should go into the next page Okay, it's spending too long on this page. Why is it stuck on this page? It's getting stuck on this page and it shouldn't be doing it, it should be advancing. Why is it doing that? page number, page timer. Date page is it here. Oh, 
Okay, why is that not? That should be advancing to the next page, but for some reason it's not doing. Uh, good night, Kelso. Uh, thanks for joining. I mean, that's that's working fine in terms of the how to play now, but it's not advancing to the next page, which is what's worrying me. Um, is this not being hit or something? Oh, why is that? Why? Why, why, blah, 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 blah. why is that happening twice? It's zero, it comes to here. Let's stick a break point in there. I just want to see if this gets hit. Um, I'm concerned that it's not not launching that piece of code now for some reason. So it should be around about 10 seconds, but it seems to be overflowing that quite a lot. So, okay, let's go in here. Let's just remove this. So now it should be around about five seconds. Which makes me think, oh, there we go. Okay. Interesting. Um, well, why is this not happening every every frame? All right, let's 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 just get rid of that then for a second. Uh, sorry, get rid of that break point. How many times does it do our animation? If it can do it once, then that's fine. That looked fine to me. All right. I'm thinking ZP counter is happening at the wrong time. So, so hopefully now when it goes back to the beginning, it should restarts. Perfect. Gets fat. Couple of seconds off screen. Perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Um, this is uh, assembly language. It's uh, 6502 assembly. Uh, for the Commodore 64. That lovely, lovely machine of old ages. Let's try again. Just want to make sure that that's all good. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do on the line underneath is is a lot less complicated than that. That that was way more complicated than any other part uh, needs to be. Um, so on this line, I'm basically just going to have a picture of the switch flashing, uh, and then the door next to it. So there's not going to be any uh, additional animation in there, just a flashing switch and a door just to show that those two things uh, can be activated. I may have the switch kind of moving up and down so you can see it, it, it gets pressed, uh, but just to show what the switch and the door looks like. Uh, the main thing was to show this this animation here uh, because that's the important thing. That's the bit where you need to know what am I supposed to do? Okay, I'm supposed to throw things at these and then go over and eat them. That's pretty much it. That's the game explained in that animation. So uh, thank you for the follow. S back. Aradzi, uh, appreciated. Oh, and uh, Juliova as well, uh, appreciated. You you come to us just as we're ending. Really, we've got about another fifteen minutes, fifteen to twenty minutes left. Um, I'm quite pleased with that. That that works all right. There's a little bit of a flash as it moves between screens. I don't know why that might be. Uh, it's not a huge deal. It's only on that one screen as well when that screen clears up. So let's have a look. Oh, not all the time either. Okay, that's fine. We can tidy that sort of stuff up at the end. Um, okay, and the game still starts. But yeah, okay, perfect. Um, all right, okay. In that case... Let's have a, we've got about 15, 20 minutes left. So let's have a look. Um, 
let's have a look what we can do in this in the last section of this. So, so that was the update for the top section, which is a whole lot of stuff here like this. Uh, but we can do we can do some extra stuff down here. Okay. Oh, we need a setup, don't we? So yeah, we've got this setup here. So we need another setup, which is to draw the switch. Um, so we do have the switch in this lot here somewhere. Oops. Is it showing that? Oh, I loaded handbrake all of a sudden. That's weird. So we do have a switch here. Uh, they're actually consecutive chars, which is good. So they start at 3C. Uh, so actually, let's do it like this. Let's store it there. And let's do that with zero there. Um, in fact, we can do this in the update. So if we're smart about this, the way we can do this is if we create another one here, let's call it, um, let's call it switch update. It's nice and simple. Why not? Um, and then we just need to do something like this. And we do it here. So this is the switch now. And we are going to a maximum of three positions here. So uh, two is, uh, yeah, three, sorry, three, three maximum positions. Uh, our update chart is the third one. I think that's right. One, two, three, yep. Yeah. So then we jump to this location, transfer it to the X. No, we won't transfer it to the X register straight away. What we will do is we will multiply this by four. So we'll uh, shift it to the left twice. So now we have zero, four or eight. Now we'll transfer that into the X register. No, we won't. We will clear the carry bit and we will add three C. Then we'll transfer it to the address so then we'll store while we zero like that. Now, what line do we need to put this on? So this needs to be, uh, so this is where one is. So it needs to be this line here. So, uh, so this is seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, one, zero. Okay. So line one, zero. Uh, so let's just copy that. Like, no, yeah. Make our loop here. Oh, no, one four one zero here. Okay, one zero. Okay, hopefully we should get some kind of switch pressing. I think the colors are probably going to be wrong, but we, we might get something there. Will the game be finished on episode 64? Oh, that's a good point. Um, I want to say it's possible, but Andy's kind of right. Maybe not. Um, I didn't actually see what happened then, but it, it it's possible. Ergonite Prince phase. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Probably a color thing. So let's let's do the colors here. So uh, let's just put color red in for now. We're probably going to have to cycle through some colors. I did want a pre-Christmas release, but it's not going to happen. I, I realize it's not going to happen. There, there's too many little things here and there that need to be done. Uh, I'm not going to rush this out next week to make this happen. Um, so there's a few little 
uh, bugs here and there that need fixing, but generally it's not it's not too bad. Um, okay, so that actually is completely the wrong place. So let's move that up two lines. Don't know how I got that so badly wrong. Um, oh, because that should have, oh shit, no, it's probably right. Oh no, yeah, so let's do comma y, there we go. I'm not sure what this is going to do now. Okay, so yeah, switch is, I mean, it's moving quite fast. Um, okay, I'll tell you what we can do though, we can do, we can do this, uh, and then, So that's going to give us a number from zero to seven, shift it to the right to give us zero to three and then shift it. So this, this seems a little bit weird that I'm doing this and this, but what it's actually doing is it's removing the, the last bit off it. Um, so if you imagine, for instance, right, this is going from zero to seven, this, this counter. Uh, so this should actually be uh, zero to six, sorry. So zero to five, six is the, the reset point. So we're going from uh, zero to five. But what we want is a value from zero to two. So if I was just to double this times this by four, we'd end up with a value that went up to 20 here, uh, which is incorrect. We want it to go up to 16. Uh, Sorry, not 16, uh, 12. So if I, if I was to just double it, sorry, it would, it would go to uh, 10. So it would be it would be incorrect. So I have to shift it one way and then shift it the other way. It just gets rid of that extra bit off the end. So, um, okay, um, I think the position is right, but it needs to be down one, one line. Like so maybe, actually, maybe I was right the first time. Uh, color wise, it doesn't need to be multicolor. I don't know why it's not multicolor at that point. I think there is another, there's something changing the multicolor value <sighs> frustratingly, but, um, so that that's kind of fine. I am actually going to knock it back to pixels backwards like that. I need to figure out why that, um, is not being set as multicolor whereas the switch uh the the, the thing up here is multicolor uh the, the thing you throw but the switch is not that's not not good so need to figure out why um so multicolor mode is d016 yes d016 so i need to find all the places where d016 is set here ah okay it is turned off is that multicolor mode? Yes, it is. Bit four. Okay, so that's turned off on sprite line four, which is two. Just trying to think of the multicolor mode in. Uh, there's no multicolor mode in the bonus. No multicolor. Okay, so this can be moved somewhere. Don't know why this is here. So let's move this down to here instead see no reason why that needs to be in that position which actually frees up a few bytes there as well okay still not good enough still too soon uh I'm trying to think of why there is a multicolor thing but there we go And then we can have the door over this side and it'll fit nicely there. But what I want to do is um, also here have uh, 
in this place here. Uh, where's the color? Here, basically. So what I want to do is before all of that, I'm going to increment switch color update uh, and then load a accumulator with switch color update. And that was zero seven add zero eight. Well, actually, I can do that by doing that as quicker. Okay, it's advancing too quickly now. Uh, so the way I'm going to do this now is I'm going to like so. And instead of doing that there, I'm going to do that in here instead. Perfect. So I just need to draw the door on that side and then we're pretty much done on this page. Uh, that has taken quite a while, but um, I'm, I'm pleased with that. So so the door is these bit, no, not that bit here. Sorry, two, big A. So Okay, we'll do this. What's the memory like? Yeah, we'll just do this directly. I think it's fine. Uh, 35 to 38, okay. Uh, thank you for the follow, Topex Harley. Uh, welcome to the stream. You catch it just as I'm about to end. Though. I'm just going to get this last piece of code in, and then I'm going to stop. Um, I just wanted to get this done before I I stopped for the night. So we'll do the colours separately in a minute, but um, I'm going to try and try and save a little bit of memory as I do this. So. Oops. I mean, it might be a bit quicker with another routine, a bit, bit easier with another routine, but we've got plenty of memory and I don't see there's a lot we need to add here. I'm kind of worried. I'm, I'm kind of wondering whether to even add the second screen about coloring the platforms or just to add power ups instead and let the platform coloring be something that people discover as they play it. Um, it's not a, it's not a huge mechanic. Um, and people might, well, people might ask why the platforms are colored. Uh, I'll worry about that. I'll have a think about that. Um, okay. So Okay, so this needs to be copied over two layers, layers here. Uh, and then this needs to be level four. Like so. I mean, there's definitely room to add the... Uh, Uh, to add the extra stuff in, but um, you know the extra the extra detail. But I'm just wondering how much we actually need to give to to the players. I don't want to add too much in for the sake of it. Um, I'd rather it have a purpose. Okay, so we know to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I need to add 
this color to 12 locations, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that is going to be E, F, and one, zero, zero, E. Actually, I can probably do this with, yeah, let's do this with, this will definitely save some, some memory. this works and I think I'll call it oh no what have I done here I've okay I've done the colors in the wrong place it's weird okay first of all the colors should be that secondly the colors should start here problem is though why is it not actually showing oh because it's yellow all right this should be fine I think Okay, we need one more row for the door. She's just should be fine though. It's gonna it's actually not gonna look too bad, I don't think. The 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 centering is just a little bit off. It's gonna feel a little bit weird, but um it might might work out all right. Okay, I need to look at that again. I'm not. I'm not convinced by that. Thanks for the follow, Raz. Sa. I, I, if we can shrink that last line down to two, that would be great, and I'd be happy with that. So let's have a look at the text for that. So this would be something like clear level and hit the switch. Hit the exit door switch. Hit the door switch to exit. So three, five, six. So let's get rid of that one and replace it with that. And let's move the switch down a level. So this is the switch. So let's just move that down one row like that. There we go. I think that looked all right. I think that looked okay. And then I think I'll call it a night. That That's kind of timed, right? What do you think? I think that looks all right. I think so. A fun and games, yeah. It just, it, without those animations, it would just feel like a wall of text. But actually having the animations in there gives you something to look at. Um, the only other thing I guess we could do is make the door move up. But I don't think it's necessary. Um, it just needs to give a rough indication of what you need to do. And I think there's enough in that to give you that indication. Um, so the question is, is what do we put on the second screen? My My thought is to not put any more information on about gameplay i think let let people figure out what the pl colored platforms are about um why is the k no why is the k no i'm not sure what you mean anybody else would just put text that yeah i i Oh yeah, why is the K not? It's not flashing, is it? That's a really good point. 
Okay, let's fix that. Why is that not flashing? It's a very, very good point. Okay. Let's have a look at it in here. Let's see which sprite is. Very good spot, yeah. <laughs> let's try and sort that before I go before I go to bed, I think. Oh god, it's cold in here. So cold. Okay, we actually don't do anything with this sprite at any point. So why it's not actually advancing the colors, I don't know. Ah, we do this down here with this one here. So it's set to yellow down here and then never set again when it comes up here. Okay. So at this point, um, we need to set the colors again. Okay, that's fine. So currently those are set um as the update update logo sprite supply logo sprite data color apps ah okay yeah so everything is set in here and this should be happening way either at the top of the page or way down the page let me just let's just see if we can do this by hacking some timers in here so let's try this i don't think that will work though no okay so let's just try nudging that on a bit I can't remember how the how the top of this is working, so it's going to be down to that basically. Keeping code and there's a quiz in two minutes. Yeah, so it's after that bottom one. Uh, that's going to be too late, I think. Yeah, it's too late. We see now it's flashing, so. Yeah, I'll I'll let the next quiz run and then and then I'll stop. Okay, so we we're kind of we're discovering the issue. So the issue is to do with with this down here. Um. So what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to write even more horrible stuff in this IRQ thing. Uh, so I'm going to have a look for D zero two. To nine, I think it will be. Yeah, here we go. Scroll the fader. All right, when does that IQ hit? Let's have a look. My God, this is horrible. Transition IRQ one. Okay, so <laughs> I am so sorry. If anybody ever wants to work on this code, I am so sorry. Uh steps comment. Uh should there be a title for the score table like e.g. Calorie count. Oh yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, maybe. do that as well before i go that's that's a small small thing so no Okay, there's an easy way to fix this. <laughs> I say easy, this is this is like the worst thing in the world to be doing right now. But I just want it to all work. I don't care how it works anymore as long as it does work. 
I've worked through worse things before, so. Intro sprite color, here we go. So instead of using that temporary thing in here, instead of using this, Two, but this is probably this might break in bonuses, so it might have to just might have to check that again. But let's just get it working on the tiles, and we can figure out the bonuses later. There we go. So just before I go, let's sort the high score out. So high score is pretty simple. Uh, we just need something like this. Uh, where's our setup? Setup page. There. So here we go. So you just need something like this. I like calorie count, that's a good one. Right, let's take a final look and then we'll call it for the night. Find someone who we can raid. Duke's on, so it'll probably be Duke. <sighs> okay, I want to send it out. I also want to make it purple. Um, so let's just move that over. Purple, let's move it over. Let's do five spaces, see if that's right. Part of me wants to move it over one more space, I think. Uh, I think it just needs that extra one. I'm I'm not sure if it'll look weird though lined up with a score, so uh have you ever edited Farrell the Feral? Okay, let's let's find her. Okay. Oh, I got her there. Oh, I missed the high score table. I hope that looked okay. I think this is looking really good. This feels like a proper intro screen now. And I I feel it's good enough that it's it's different from... Yeah, that looks spot on there. Cool. Um, yeah, all right. Cool. All right, I'm going to call it there then. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Let's, uh, let's raid Farrell the Feral. Thanks for joining tonight, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so many of you stuck around for so long, and it's not been the most interesting uh, stream. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, what will the bottom large text actually say? It depends how much space we've got left. I'd like to thank as many people as I can down there. I think it's going to be a, a thanks kind of ticker more than anything else. Um, but we shall see. It depends on how much space we've got. So um, next stream, we'll we'll add the power up screen. I'm going to leave the 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 color platform description we'll just go for uh power ups and then we'll just make some levels and then really it's just bug squashing and a few other things so um yeah let's go you want to see something addictive mate oh i'll tell you what i'm getting i'm getting tired of this game now i'm getting really tired of this game now but we're uh we're getting there
Uh, all right, cool. Thanks, guys. I shall see you all on Tuesday for some Game Boy, most likely. Game Boy Omega 65, I'm not sure yet. Probably Game Boy. Okay, take care, guys, and I'll see you uh, next week. Bye.